Chapter 475 Prepare in Advance Regardless of how Gui looked at the Bohemia Bay project, it felt like a conspiracy. However, if she had to guess who was behind the attack on E Corporation, not to mention Gu Yi, even Yi Yi would not be able to figure it out. However, the people from the Bureau of Industry and Commerce had come to look for him. Naturally, this problem could not be underestimated. The sooner it was resolved, the better. An hour later, Yi Yi personally brought people to the Bohemia Bay project, leaving Gu Yi at home to take care of the children, while constantly searching for Xin Yu who could not be contacted. The car rumbled in the courtyard. Gu Yi stood in front of the glass window upstairs and looked at the gradually disappearing car. Her heart felt as if it was being pressed down by a stone. Even breathing became difficult. In the room, Shiryu was lying on the carpet uneasily. His small body was always twisting around uneasily, matching his round body. It was like a meatworm wriggling. It wasn't long before he finished his meal it was not suitable for exercise. Xiaoma was afraid that his sister would feel unwell later. He reached out to hug her and tried to stop her from exercising. However, just as Xiaoma's hand touched Shiryu, Shiryu's mouth pouted. With a look of wanting to cry, Xiaoma did not stop her from exercising. However, his heart was hanging in the air, afraid that she would feel uncomfortable. Luckily, little Shiwei was small and didn't have much strength. After rolling for a while, he didn't move. He lay on the carpet, his mouth open, and he stuck out his tongue to breathe. He looked cute and tight. Gu Yi stood by the window for a while. After seeing enough of the siblings' movements, she walked to their side and sat down. Xiaoma, mommy is going out later. I'll give you a mission, okay? Gu Yi's tone was very solemn and serious. She did not casually perfunctory Xiaoma just because he was a child. Xiaoma looked up at Gu Yi for a long time and nodded. Is it because of those people who just arrived that mommy wants to go out? Gu Yi was slightly stunned as she looked at Xiaoma's serious face and nodded. Yes, something happened at dad's company. They want to inspect our company, so we need to make preparations and cooperate. In order for Xiaoma to understand, Gu Yi tried her best to explain the matter in simple words. So I need to go to the company to deal with some things. My sister is still young, so I'll leave it to you. When mommy is not around, you have to take good care of your sister with mommy Li. Do you understand? Xiaoma looked at Gu Yi quietly on her tender little face. After a while, she replied. All right, I understand. Mommy, you can go out without worrying. I will definitely take good care of my sister. Looking at Xiaoma's sensible appearance, Gu Yi's heart softened. She kissed Xiaoma on the forehead, got up and walked to the door. She looked at the two children in the room before closing the door and leaving. Gu Yi drove out of the garage and used her Bluetooth phone to call Xin Yu. However, just like Xin Yu's assistant, secretary had said before, no matter how she called, the prompt was never answered. After several attempts, Xin Yu still didn't answer the phone. Gui gave up this action and called Xin Yu in secretary. She told her to keep calling Xin Yu. At the same time, she sent a group of bodyguards to ambush near the villa to deal with any sudden situation. Last time, Song Miao-na's incident had indeed touched her too much. In this information age, leaking information too quickly was also a danger. The reporters can do anything for the headlines. At this time, Gu Yi made these arrangements just in case, but after three hours, she was very grateful to herself for doing so. Otherwise, the two children in the family would not know what to do. After finishing, Gu Yi arrived at the bottom of the E Corporation building in a short amount of time. Regardless of the astonished gazes of the others, she quickly entered. Soon, she arrived at the top floor. It belonged to Iya's office. Wherever Iya's assistant Lian had already received the news and was waiting for him. When he saw her coming, he immediately welcomed her. President Gu, here are all the information you need for the Bohemia Bay project. Gui took the documents from Li An's hand and looked at them quickly. Then she pointed at one of them. What's wrong with this money? According to the information, the project has only just begun. Why is half of the money already out? It was normal for a project to start. It was especially normal for a large project like this to be paid in advance. However, what was abnormal was that it was usually 30%. However, 60% had already been given here. This figure had exceeded the standard. Hearing Gu Yi's words, Lian hurriedly stretched out his head to take a look. Seeing the data, his brows furrowed. I don't know. I don't know. Gu Yi's voice was loud, one doesn't know, two don't know, who is in charge of such a big project? Gu Yi's aura was so strong that Li An's heartbeat missed a beat and he said nervously, Director Xin Yu Xin is in charge of this case. However, Ang Li also knew that he couldn't get through to Xin Yu three hours ago. 
Xin Yu was in charge. Gu Yi felt the nerves on her forehead jump. She sighed deeply and pressed down on her forehead, closing her eyes. The office was very quiet. After a while, Gu Yi opened her eyes. Since Xin Yu is not here, then go to the finance department and get all the information about the Bauhinia Bay project. All right, I understand. Ang Li turned around and was about to leave. Before she could walk out, Gu Yi's voice sounded behind her. By the way, get me all the information about all the suppliers of materials for the Bauhinia Bay project. Since no one was in charge of this project, she would be in charge of it from now on. If there really was a problem, she would definitely discover it. Ang Li nodded and didn't say anything. He quickly closed the door and went out. Gu Yi sat in the swivel chair and turned around forcefully. She looked at the bright sunshine outside the French window. She picked up the phone for a long time and called the public relations department in E Corporation. She told them to pay attention to the news on the internet recently. Any news that was harmful to E-Corporation should be reported in time to deal with it. After finishing all the things that Gui could think of, Ang Li, who was looking for information, finally came back. So, all afternoon, Gu Yi and Ang Li stayed in Yi's office, studying all the information about the Bauhinia Bay project. Unknowingly, the sky outside quickly darkened, but the people in the office did not notice until Gu Yi's phone rang. Gu Yi was immersed in studying the information. All of her attention was focused on the document, but she did not hear it. It was Ang Li who was the first to regain consciousness. President Gu, your phone is ringing. Ang Li said as he walked to Gu Yi's desk and knocked hard on it. Sensing the commotion, Gu Yi raised her head and a cell phone appeared in front of her. The screen of the cell phone was constantly flickering with light, and Yi Ye's name was constantly jumping. It's President Yi. Seeing the familiar name, Iya's sharp face suddenly appeared in her mind. Gu Yi's heart also grew a little stronger. Only then did she realize that the sky outside had already darkened. It's getting late. Go eat something outside first and then come back. Knowing that Gu Yi and Yi Yi had something to say, Lian was very tactful. All right. After saying that, Lian turned around and went out. After going out, he did not forget to close the door for Gu Yi and was caught off guard by the sound from inside. Are you okay? Gui stood up, pinched the phone, and stood in front of the huge French window. Looking at the lights outside the window, she thought of the people on the other side of the phone, and her heart calmed down a lot. Fortunately, I just got off the plane. At that time, Yi Yi stood by the window of the hotel and looked at the night scene outside. He thought to Gu Yi, who was on the other side of the phone, How is it? Did you find Shen Yu? Saying this, Gu Yi felt a little disappointed. No, after calling all afternoon, no one answered the phone. There's no need to be too anxious. He will definitely come back. How's the company? Is there anything else strange? Not yet. Even though nothing had happened today, Gu Yi always had a depressing feeling. It was like a dull feeling before a storm. She always felt that danger was lurking in her surroundings. Although she didn't know why she had such an illusion, her past experience told Gu Yi that such an illusion was very likely correct. Gu Yi said the word temporarily, simply, but Yi Yi noticed the heavy tone in Gu Yi's voice. She looked at the pitch black night sky and was silent for a while before she spoke again. Don't worry too much. There's still me. Things will be settled. Yes, I know. You should be careful when you're over there. The people from the Bureau of Industry and Commerce weren't that easy to deal with and this project was always weird, so it was even harder to deal with. Yes, I know. Yi Yi whispered, his gaze fixed on the direction not far away. His deep eyes shone with a faint light, but they were weak and good-looking. Be careful yourself. No matter what happens, protecting yourself is the most important thing. Yes, Gui replied softly. Afterwards, the two of them held each other's phones. Nobody said anything else. They just quietly held the phone and listened to the sounds of breathing coming from the phone. The words in their hearts could become quiet. After a long time, she felt that it was almost time. Gui suggested hanging up the phone. Before hanging up, Iya's voice came from which side? I miss you very much. I still have to wait for me to return. They were separated for less than a day, but they missed each other for a long time, especially on this special day. Gui's heart softened and the expression on her face relaxed a lot. I miss you too. Xiaoma and I are waiting for you at home. After saying that, Gui quickly hung up the phone. After looking at the phone for a long time, she sat down and started working again. Chapter 476 Message Leakage Not long after Gui sat down, the door of the office was pushed open from outside. Lian came in from outside, his handsome face ashen and his breathing hurried. 
President Gu, it's not good. The heavens are always like this. The more you fear, the more it comes. Just after the news broadcast ended, almost all the LCD screens in the city have a piece of news. News reports say that our Bohemia Bay project is not designed to meet the standards. The project is jerry-built, and we even evaded taxes financially in previous years. Moreover, we have used commercial fraud and other economic crimes in the acquisition of Song Corporation. At 8 o'clock this evening, such a piece of news appeared on all the internet communication tools, such as mobile phones, computers, televisions, and so on. Originally, every day, it was time for people to return home from work, eat and watch TV dramas and other news scenes. This news was broadcast at the same time, so those who watched the communication tools saw this news at this time. Even those who did not watch the network tools would know this news under the infection and discussion of the surrounding people. When Ang Lee and some members of the public relations department saw the news, their minds went blank. Finished. If Ang Lee and Yi Yi hadn't stayed longer and were still thinking of coming back to tell Gu Yi, he would still be stunned in the public relations department. Subsequently, there was also news that in order to confirm the authenticity of this piece of news, there were also news on the internet about the Bohemia Bay project of the Bureau of Industry and Commerce and some photographs of the EE Yi Villa found by the Bureau of Industry and Commerce this morning. As he spoke, Ong Lee turned on his phone, found the page, and handed it to Gu Yi, who was sitting behind the desk, trembling. Gu Yi's face was tense. The lines on her chin were simple and hard, showing a bit of coldness and sharpness. Even if she didn't get close, people could still feel the coldness emanating from her body. Without saying a word, Gu Yi picked up the phone from Ong Lee's hand and quickly looked at the text and images displayed on the phone's page. This article was short enough compared to the long and lengthy text, but in this short enough text, it clearly listed some of the crimes that Yi Yi and E Corporation were involved in, accompanied by a certain number of pictures. As for those pictures, some of them Gui had never seen before, while others were scenes of people from the Bureau of Industry and Commerce coming to the villa this morning. After reading it, Gui returned the phone to Lian Lian and took the phone from Gu Yi's hand, and his handsome face was full of worry. President Gu, look at this. What are we going to do? Gui did not say anything. She salivated. Her clear eyes were pitch black, and the black undercurrents in the depths of her eyes were surging intensely. The office was silent. Ang Lee stared fixedly at Gui who was sitting at the desk. His hand holding the phone unconsciously tightened. The veins on the back of his hand burst out, but he didn't say anything. He stood quietly, even his breathing lightened a lot. After a long time, under the nervous and anxious gaze of Lian, Gui finally raised her head. The storm in her eyes was gone, clear and bright, but people could feel the firmness in it at a glance. Tell the public relations department that you don't need to do anything. Don't do anything. Ang Lee looked at Gu Yi with a puzzled expression, President Gu, are you sure you want to do this? Right now rumors are flying everywhere. If you don't stop it, it will be an immeasurable injury to e-corporation. The amount of information exposed in this webpage video was simply too large and involved too many aspects. If these words were true, even if the future hadn't arrived, it would feel like the end had already been seen. Without goodwill and trust, a bankruptcy liquidation would be inevitable for a country as powerful as e-corporation. Ang Lee had been in e-corporation for so many years, but he still had feelings for it. If he just watched e-corporation die like this, his heart would always feel a sudden pain. Gui raised her head and looked at the anxiety and uneasiness on Li An's face. The anxiety in her heart disappeared without a trace at this moment, and her entire body became even more calm. Yes, I didn't do anything. I just watched. Her voice was pleasant to hear, but her tone was indisputably resolute. But Lian still hesitated. Lian. Gui suddenly called out Ang Li's name. Ah, Lian was puzzled and looked at Gui doubtfully. If it was Yi Yi sitting here today, would you question his decision again and again? Of course not. Ang Lee said intermittently. President Gu, it's not that I don't believe you, it's just... However, this matter was too important to E-Corporation. However, at this moment, neither Yi Yi nor Xin Yu, who could normally be the sole owner of the company, was around. It inevitably made him panic. You don't need to explain. I understand what you mean. Gui quickly interrupted Ang Lee and said in an indisputable tone, but this is a special time. Since Yi Yi left the company to me before leaving, I hope you can believe my decision. Ang Lee was the assistant president. Gui needed him to handle a lot of things. If he didn't believe her, then the intensity of his work would naturally be greatly reduced. 
This was very dangerous for e-corporation now, so Guyi wouldn't allow such a situation to exist. Being watched by Guyi's clear and firm gaze, Li An's heartbeat gradually returned to its normal rhythm. The frenzied aura on his body also dissipated a lot, and his expression became more calm and resolute. All right, President Gu, I understand what you mean. I'll go to the public relations department to inform them. Ang Li took two steps back and stared at Gu Yi. Gu Yi sat behind her desk and watched Ang Li's actions. Her eyebrows raised slightly and she was a little surprised. In Gu Yi's line of sight, Ang Li bowed deeply before he got up and walked out of the office. Gu Yi silently looked at the closed door. After a long time, the solemnity on her face disappeared and her heart calmed down a little. Although the long video broadcast tonight had a great impact on e-corporation, it also allowed Gui to confirm something that she had been thinking about for a long time. There was really a powerful force behind it that was targeting e-corporation. However, was the other party targeting the company or the people with such a big move? If it was only aimed at the company, then this matter would be slightly simpler. If it was aimed at people? Thinking of this possibility, Gu Yi's heartbeat missed a beat. As Ang Lee had expected, when Ang Lee gave Gu Yi's order, the public relations department in E Corporation was stunned. Ang Lee looked at the people who were speaking loudly and constantly opposing the order, and he suddenly understood why Gu Yi did this. Originally, Yi Ye's temporary visit to the Bauhinia Bay project was just a private matter. Now, after this video was broadcast, it immediately became a well known matter. Facing this rather strange order, everyone's resistance was a little strong. Lian coldly explained what Gui had just said to him in the office, which suppressed everyone's doubts. City Z was very lively tonight because of this sudden news message, almost everyone fell into a heated discussion and the content of this topic was naturally, is the content given in the video and text about e-corporation tonight true? The sky was pitch black and the air was filled with cold mist. However, this night was incomparably hot. Gui finished packing up the documents and drove home late at night. She returned to her room. Sure you had already fallen asleep on the big bed, while Xiaoma was still standing by the side with his eyes open. Seeing Gu Yi return, Xiaoma's eyes immediately lit up. He quickly jumped out of bed and ran to Gu Yi's side. Mommy, you're finally back. Gu Yi pulled Xiaoma to the side of the bed and looked at her sleeping daughter. The corner of her mouth curled into a smile. It's so late, why aren't you sleeping? Xiaoma turned around and looked at little Sherway on the bed before saying, I'm afraid that I'll overwhelm my sister if I fall asleep. Gui was slightly stunned, so much so that she didn't want this reason. Children always roll when they sleep, especially when they are as old as Xiaoma. Before little Shirwei, Gui would go to Xiaoma's room every morning. She would tease her son like this when she saw his twisted body. She didn't want him to remember it, and she didn't sleep today in order not to suppress Shiryu. Mommy, is something wrong with Daddy's company? The news broadcast on TV this afternoon. At this point, Xiaoma paused for a moment, his expression filled with hesitation, as if he didn't know what to say. Seeing this, Gu Yi's heart sank, but the expression on her face became gentler. Did Xiaoma also see the news? Xiaoma raised his head and looked at his mother. Under Gu Yi's gaze, he nodded. Yes. You want to ask if that news is true, right? Gu Yi asked softly. Yes. Xiaoma squeezed out a word from his teeth. Some of the people on the news are the people who came to our house this morning. I'm afraid. Those people were naturally referring to the people from the Bureau of Commerce and Industry in the morning. Gui looked down at Xiaoma, who was slightly hesitant and sad, and sighed invisibly. Xiaoma, do you believe in dad? Xiaoma's mouth slightly pouted as he looked at Gu Yi's gentle face. After a while he nodded. Believe me. Although he occasionally loved to do the opposite with Yi, it was just a child's awkward attitude. In fact, Xiaoma still cared about this father. Since you believe your father, then don't listen to those meaningless words on the internet. The reason they did this is because they are not as powerful as your father if there is something you don't dare to directly say. You will only make these things to carry out the back attack. Although you are still young, you will still have to grow up in the future. Since you already have this matter, then you should watch carefully. When you grow up, you will know how to deal with it when you encounter it. Chapter 477 It Never Rains But It Pours Taking advantage of this opportunity, Gu Yi gave Xiaoma a good lesson in reality. Although his words were spoken with ease, only Gu Yi knew whether it was that easy in her heart. That's right. The next day before the family had breakfast, Aunt Lee came in from outside. She said that it was the doorman. There were a bunch of reporters surrounding the community, clamoring to come in for an interview. 
If Gooey hadn't expected to increase the security, perhaps those reporters would have rushed in like what happened to Song Miona. I see. You don't have to do anything about Madame Lee's family. Pay more attention to the things outside. As long as those people don't come home, they can say whatever they like. I know, Aunt Lee said as she turned around and walked outside. Because she had already prepared for Xiaoma and Shiryu, Gu Yi came out of the community with Butler's help and ran all the way in. Then she went in through the back door of E Corporation. At this moment, such a big thing had happened. Neither Yi Yi nor Xin Yi were present. The group had long been in a mess. The group directors gathered in the conference room to argue who was responsible for the cases that broke out last night. They quarreled for a long time but still could not come to a conclusion. Before Gui could reach the door of the conference room, she had already heard it. She stood at the door and listened to Su Yi. She listened to their discussions about the distribution of shares in the conference room with an unpredictable expression. President Gu, the directors came to the meeting room early this morning. They've been quarreling but there hasn't been any results yet. Ang Lee said with an ugly expression. It was only the second day after the news broke and nothing had happened in E-Corporation. It was truly chilling for these directors to say such words. Gui did not say anything. She stood at the door and listened until it turned white hot and her patience was exhausted. Only then did she push open the door in front of her. Is E-Corporation's so-called group director a group of people who only quarrel and don't do anything when they encounter something? In the bustling conference room, the sudden opening of the door interrupted everyone's argument. The cold girl was like ice water poured from the beginning of summer, causing one's impulsive mind to immediately calm down. No matter how things happened, what we should think about now is not how these things happened, but how they should be resolved. In the large conference room, there was silence for a moment. After a long time, someone did not say angrily, Gu Yi, President Yi is not here. Even if you are his wife, you still have no right to speak nonsense here. Yi Yi was the president of the group, but Gu Yi and Yi Corporation had no real relationship except for Yi Yi. If they wanted to teach them a lesson, they had to be qualified to do so. Whether you have the qualifications or not is not up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to it. As Gu Yi spoke, she raised her hand and Lian immediately handed over the documents that had been prepared. This is a letter of transfer. The current e-corporation group has already transferred 70% of his shares to my name. Therefore, I am absolutely qualified to speak to you here. If you don't believe me, you can read this document. As she spoke, Gui handed the documents in her hand to the nearest director and asked him to read them before passing them on in turn. Before Yi left, he seemed to have predicted that such a problem would arise. He had already sent people to do these things long ago, and these documents had only just been released this morning. Those group directors had read this document and finally stopped questioning Gu Yi's identity. However, but so what if you own shares in E-Corporation? It sounds so nice. If you have this matter, come up with a way to solve it, not just verbally. Of course I will solve the problem, but since you have left the problem to me, I hope that you can go home and stay at home and wait for the news. If you let me know what you are doing privately, then don't blame me for being impolite. Are you threatening us? One of the directors said discontentedly. Gui turned her head and stared at him with a clear gaze. It's not a threat, it's a fact. If I let you guys do something small, I really wouldn't be soft-hearted. You. Of course, if you want to contribute to the group, it's not impossible to solve this problem. Then I'll leave all of this to you. I believe that with the intelligence of the directors, this matter will be solved very quickly. As she spoke, Gui looked at the directors calmly and naturally. Her calm gaze seemed to be calm and harmless. Naturally, it swept past the directors. However, when they were looked at with that gaze, everyone present felt as if they were being weighed down by a heavy burden of a thousand jean. Cold sweat unconsciously broke out on their foreheads. When Gu Yi's gaze swept past the directors present, no one stood up and said loudly that this problem could be solved. Ang Li watched from the side, his face full of disdain. At the critical moment, he didn't dare to say anything. Since no one has spoken, then this matter is settled. The meeting is adjourned. After saying that, Gu Yi turned around and left under the complicated gazes of all the directors. President Gu, did you say that in front of the directors just now? Does that mean that you have come up with a solution to the problem? Lian whispered when no one was around. How can it be that easy? Gu Yi sighed, a faint sadness appearing on her face. Obviously, someone should be prepared for this matter. E Corporation looked huge, but apart from her usual daily operations, Yi Yi and Xin Yi were the only ones who really made the decision. 
Yet these two people weren't in the company at the same time. This gave Gu Yi the feeling that they were trying to divert her away from the company. Li An's eyes widened. Then what should we do? You said that you would solve this problem. If they can't solve it, then they won't let you off easily. Those directors just now might not have a way to solve the problem, but it was their turn to teach people a lesson. They were definitely experts. Moreover, Gu Yi's actions just now could be considered to have completely lost their face. They harbored hatred in their hearts. If they knew that Gu Yi was simply unable to solve the problem, it would definitely cause a headache when the time came. Thinking about that scene, Lian felt the veins on his forehead jumping. What should we do if we don't say that? Let a group of directors quarrel in the company. Was this disdain for E Corporation's employees not enough to change their minds? Ang Li sighed and remained silent. Forget it, take one step at a time. Things will always be settled. The sky is falling and there is still a tall man standing on top of it. As the two of them spoke, they returned to the president's office to continue discussing the issue. It was almost 10 hours since the release of the video last night. There was no sign of the heated discussion on the internet about this matter diminishing. A corporation had only been working for half an hour, and the hotline of the public relations department was about to explode by the reporters. Gui and Ang Lee studied for a long time and found out that there was a problem with one of the projects. The final signatory was not Yi Yi, but Shen Yu. Lian stretched out his head and saw the words on it. He shook his head with a confused expression. I don't know these documents. I haven't seen them at all. Ang Lee was Yi Yi's special assistant. All the documents that needed to be signed by Yi Yi had to be deleted and filed by him. However, he looked at several documents given by Gui one after another and was at a loss in his mind. I can confirm that I really haven't read these documents. In other words, Yi Yi may not even know about these documents. Gui looked at the document calmly and frowned. What's going on with this? Gui pointed at one of the documents. It was a year and a half ago. At that time, the group was still fine. Yi Yi had not granted privileges to Xin Yu yet. The final signatory should be Yi Yi. Why did Xin Yu approve all these documents? He had checked several documents in succession and they were all like this. So the problem was Xin Yu? The so-called good fortune never comes alone. Just as the internet was still heatedly discussing e-corporations tax evasion and evasion, and even involving economic crimes, a reporter reported that there was a high-rise collapse at the Bauhinia Bay project this morning, injuring five staff members who went to work. Now those staff members were covered in blood and were being sent to a foreign hospital for emergency treatment. As soon as this report appeared, it was like adding frost to the snow for e-corporation, which was in the midst of a storm. It confirmed the rumors that the e-corporation project had been cut short in the news yesterday. As a result, everyone's discussions about e-corporation became even more intense. In the huge president's office, there was no sound of reading the documents. Lian looked worriedly at Gui who was holding the documents in his hand, but did not even see a single word on the LCD screen. His eyes were filled with worry. In the news video, not only were there images of buildings collapsing and injuring people, there were also images of Yi Yi dealing with the accident at the construction site. Although it was only a short moment, Gu Yi still remembered it. There was no trace of a smile on familiar handsome's face. Her thin lips were tightly pursed, and her chin was tightly stretched in a straight line. She wore a broad work uniform and a blue helmet. She mixed them together in the crowd. Even though she wore the same clothes as everyone else, Gu Yi could still recognize her at a glance. Especially her pair of dark, deep, bottomless eyes, which distinguished him from everyone else as before. At this time, what are you thinking? Bang! Just as he was thinking, the door to the office was suddenly pushed open by someone from the outside. Because he used too much force to open the door, he directly smashed into the wall. The loud noise woke up the people in the office. Xin Yu, who had been searching for a day and night without any news, suddenly appeared at the door. His handsome face was covered in sweat as he covered his chest and panted heavily. It was obvious that he looked like he had been doing intense exercise. Chapter 478 Xin Yu returned. What exactly is going on? As Xin Yu spoke, he patted his chest and breathed heavily. Because his aura was unstable, he spoke intermittently. The familiar voice finally pulled Ang Li and Gu Yi back. Looking at Xin Yu, who was stooping down, Ang Li asked softly, Director Shen, where have you been these past two days? As the second in command of the company, Xin Yu needed to deal with some important and urgent matters that Yi Yi did not have time to deal with. The resident company had more time than the president of Yi Yi. If something happened, it could be said to be the same as the rest of the year. 
For example, it was the first time that he could not make a phone call for two days and could not find a person. If you have time to talk about this, you can tell me how the company is now. After resting for a while, Shen Yu's breathing calmed down and he walked to Gu Yi. Sister-in-law. Lian, tell him about the company these two days. So crackling, Ang Li used the simplest words to tell Shen Yu the whole story and the questions they found. As Shen Yu listened, his expression became more and more solemn. In the end, his brows furrowed. So you're saying that I'm the one who signed all the documents for the project that went wrong? Shen Yu said with an incredulous tone. Will I Shen Yu ever have such an idiotic time? Just as he finished speaking, a black and white document appeared in front of him. Take a look for yourself. Actually, Gu Yi didn't really believe that Shen Yu would do such a thing, but after reading so many documents and placing them in black and white, she just didn't want to believe it. There was nothing she could do about it. What is this? Shen Yu lowered his head and took the document from Gu Yi. He looked at it clearly and quickly showed what the contract was about. Before he could express his opinion, another document was handed over. For an entire hour, no one spoke in the huge office. Only the sound of reading documents was heard, accompanied by Shen Yu's increasingly ugly expression and his raised eyebrows at home. After a long time after reading all the documents, Shen Yu's face was no longer ugly. I have never seen these documents, much less signed them. After running for a long time, Shen Yu had drunk too much cold wind from him. Now his throat was so dry that he was like a duck when he opened his mouth. However, at this time, Shen Yu no longer had the mood to pay attention to this. But your name is written at the bottom of all the documents. Gui calmly and naturally said this unquestionable conclusion. Her cold voice was like a heavy hammer smashing into Shen Yu's heart. I? There's no need to explain. The documents are all your names, but that doesn't mean that these are all signed by you. Shen Yu's body stiffened and his expression was stunned. He looked at Gu Yi, unable to react. Sister-in-law, you mean? Gu Yi crossed her chest and stared fixedly at the document in Shen Yu's hand, her expression somewhat heavy. If it was just a single document, perhaps it could be explained that Shen Yu was doing something else when he read the document, or that he did not see it clearly, so he would sign the document. However, if several documents were like this, I would not be able to explain such a reason. In particular, the owner of the signature had now told her that he had never seen the documents, so the problem was naturally even more serious. Shen Yu looked back at Igu Yi. The two of them looked at each other in the air, but even after hearing what Gui said, the gravity on Shen Yu's face did not diminish. So, did someone imitate my handwriting? Handwriting imitation was usually a story that only appeared in novels and TV dramas. If it were to happen in the past, Shen Yu might sigh a few more times. But now that it happened to him and the company, Shen Yu can no longer laugh out loud. I don't rule out this possibility, Gu Yi said calmly. Because of this possibility, Gu Yi asked Ang Li to go to Shen Yu for nearly two years to deal with all the cases that had happened, and then she took them to Shen Yu to judge which ones he had signed. Although this method could not completely determine all the documents, it was the only method that could be used now. I'm sorry. In the office, Ang Li went out. Shen Yu said to Gu Yi, who was standing in front of the French window and looking outside with a blank expression. Don't apologize in a hurry. Let's talk first. What have you been doing these past two days? We can't get through to you for two days. According to the friendship and trust between Shen Yu and Yi Yi, Gu Yi naturally would not really suspect that Shen Yu had done something to the company. However, it was enough to make people curious that such a short person suddenly disappeared for two days. As she spoke, Gu Yi turned around and looked at Shen Yu, who was standing opposite her. Facing Gu Yi's gaze, Shen Yu suddenly became a little embarrassed. He grinned and his handsome face was dyed crimson. This difficult look made Gu Yi even more curious. You're actually shy. What did you do? Shen Yu was always famous for blushing and there weren't many things that could make him blush. I'm going to City Y. Since he had spoken, Shen Yu did not feel embarrassed. Yin Yin called the other day and said that Mama Li's health was even worse at home. I wonder if she can survive or not. I saw how powerful she was on the phone. She was a little worried so she went over. Xin Yu said lightly, but in reality, only he knew how anxious he was when he received a call from Li Ying Yin. Without waiting for a moment, he got up from his bed, cleaned himself up within 10 minutes, and drove over by himself. He left too quickly. The result of his lack of preparation was that he didn't know when his phone had run out of battery. He didn't know until halfway through the journey when he had to make a phone call. Originally, he thought that he would charge up when he arrived at the Li clan, but in the end, he saw that Li Yin had forgotten everything. 
He wanted to take a few days off to accompany Li Yingnian until she was in a good mood, but he saw the news on TV before he could take a day off and then rushed back. Xin Yu blushed and Gu Yi did not interrupt to look at him, probably guessing what was going on. Since that's the case, how is Mama Li? Gu Yi was also worried about Li Yingnian, but even if she was worried, she could not leave. Sure Yu was still young and could not leave people. Fortunately, it has stabilized. What Xin Yu did not say was that he was the main reason why Mama Li's body stabilized. Stability is good. Because of Gu Yi's non-interference policy, there were more and more discussions about e-corporation on the internet. At the same time, with this upsurge, more and more people came downstairs to e-corporation to watch. If not for the transfer of people from the security company in advance, perhaps those people would have already rushed in. After preliminary appraisal by Xin Yu, Li Ong found documents with the word Xin Yu in the past two years, about one third of which Xin Yu did not read, which also meant that it was not signed by him. While they were busy, Gu Yi's personal phone number rang. Gu Yi stopped her work and answered the phone. Before she could speak, her voice trembled when she heard the voice coming from the phone. Mommy, my sister has a fever and a cold. She needs a doctor. Because he was worried, or perhaps he was blaming himself, Xiao Ma's tender voice was filled with sobs, but he was still strong and didn't cry. Little M.O. don't cry. Mommy knows. I'll be right back. Watch your sister. Hearing Gu Yi's words, Xin Yu raised his head and looked at Gu Yi worriedly. What happened to Xiao Ma? It's not Xiao Ma. What's wrong? It's Shi Yu who has a fever. Because of the medicine, Shi Yu was not well from birth. Gu Yi was worried so she took care of Shi Yu carefully. She didn't want to have a fever if she wasn't careful now. Thinking of Shi Yu's fever, Gu Yi couldn't help but worry. Fortunately, Xin Yu had already returned. I'll leave the matter of Xin Yu company to you. I'll go back first. All right. I understand. Knowing the situation in Shi Yu, Xin Yu naturally knew that the situation was dangerous. As she spoke, Gui had already packed up her things and left the office. Gui returned home as fast as she could, because she had already notified the family doctor on the way, so when Gui arrived, the doctor had just finished examining Shiryu. Doctor, how is Shiryu? The doctor shook his head with a serious expression. Missy has had a low temperature fever for a day. The temperature can't drop. Especially when she's in a special situation, it's best to send her to the hospital. When Gu Yi was pregnant, it was always this doctor who treated her, so he naturally understood little Shi Yu's situation. It's just that there are so many reporters gathered at the entrance. Can we go out now? The doctors at the entrance had already seen it. He was already careful. He was almost discovered by the reporters. It was difficult to guarantee that he would not be discovered by those reporters if he brought the uncomfortable and crying children out. If he discovered that he was being entangled, the situation would be very dangerous. Yes, definitely. Gu Yi's words were firm, and her face was firm and irrefutable. The doctor looked at him and nodded without saying anything. Soon he went downstairs and prepared to go. Gu Yi walked to the bedside and looked at Shiryu, who was lying on the bed with a blushing face. Because her nose was blocked, she had no choice but to breathe with her mouth open. Her eyes turned red. Carrying Shiryu out of bed, she quickly put on her clothes, covered up Gu Yi and carried Shiryu downstairs, got in the car and headed straight for the hospital. Draw blood, test, wait, get results. In the infirmary, the doctor was holding the test results in his hand, his brows furrowed tightly, and his expression was solemn. Gu Yi's heart felt as if it had been pinched by an invisible hand. It was so stuffy and painful that she closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Only then did she open her eyes to look at the doctor and forcefully speak calmly. Doctor, tell me the result. Chapter 479 Sure you was sick. Seeing Gu Yi's resolute expression, the doctor sighed. In the end, he told Gu Yi the actual situation in Sure you. Actually, Miss Yi is suffering from a plastic anemia. Although the amount of illegal drugs you consumed before isn't too much for yourself, there is no resistance between the baby and the weak body. Especially when she stays in your stomach, she can only absorb the things in your body so. The reason why illegal drugs are called illegal drugs is because, in addition to the harm they do to the human body, there is also a large part of the reason because they are not easily eliminated. Those drugs accumulate in the body and the burden on the body will be heavier after years and months. In other words, the reason why Gu Yi was able to get rid of the drug so quickly at that time was partly because sure you had absorbed most of the drug in her stomach, which was why she was like this. Although the doctor did not say anything, Gu Yi understood the meaning behind it and her face turned pale. 
President Gu, are you all right? As the doctor spoke, he looked at Gui worriedly. How much he ye cared about Gui? This doctor had experienced it before. If anything happened to her, Yi Yi would not let him go. I'm fine. Gu Yi took a deep breath and restrained her mind. She looked at the doctor in front of her with a firm expression and said, Then is it possible to recover from this illness? If not, what would happen to Sure Yu? As long as Gu Yi thought that Sure Yu might also become those pale and powerless patients in the hospital, her heart would ache badly. She had just given birth to a daughter who was less than one year old. This... Speaking of this question, the doctor's expression was a little ugly. Gui was already nervous, but when she saw the doctor's expression, she became even more nervous. What's wrong? Sure use illness. President Gu, there are only two ways to treat DA. One is to be more direct and find someone with the same bone marrow as Miss E. As long as he can easily donate bone marrow, then we can basically cure Miss E after the operation. Gui hurriedly asked when she saw that the doctor had finished talking about one type and did not mention the other. Another one? As the doctor spoke, he habitually pushed the iframe on his nose bridge. The other method is similar to the one I just mentioned. It requires the same pairing. However, this time the pairing is made of hematopoietic stem cells. As long as the two cells are paired successfully, it is very likely that they will recover after surgery. The doctor's words were simple, but even if Gui did not understand this matter, she understood that the matter involved was not that simple. However, the most important thing now is to give Miss Shuryu the fever. Everything needs to be watched after the fever has subsided. This matter was too important. He had to always tell the parents. The only thing the doctor was glad about was that he was facing Gu Yi, not the powerful Yi Yi. Doctor, I am the mother of the child. Will my chances of successfully matching the child's bone marrow be higher? Thinking of this possibility, Gu Yi felt as if her dying heart was about to come back to life. As long as she could save Sure Yu. It's hard to say. It should be said that there is indeed a possibility of matching between parents and children. However, this possibility is very low. Especially if the matching is successful, there will definitely be rejection between the parents and children. There will definitely be rejection. Hearing the doctor's words, despair spread in Gu Yi's heart. Normally, when a doctor spoke to a patient's family member in order to prevent the patient's family member from feeling desperate about the patient's condition, they would leave room for maneuver. However, this time, the doctor used the word definitely which could not be changed. It must be true that there was no room for maneuver. However, it is not allowed between parents. It is still possible between siblings or other relatives, especially biological siblings. The success rate of matching will be much higher than that of parents, and there will not be any rejection. Really? Hearing this, Gu Yi finally breathed a sigh of relief. However, before she could recover her happiness, Gu Yi thought of another thing, but what if the match winner is too young? The doctor had just said that besides the rejection reaction from parents, other relatives could also be paired successfully, especially biological siblings. Wasn't Sure Yu's older brother Xiaoma? Gui was worried about Shuryu, but it wasn't that she didn't love Xiaoma anymore. If there was something wrong with Shuryu after saving Xiaoma, then what was the point of doing this operation? Hearing this question, the doctor answered it much more quickly. There's no problem with that. As long as the pairing is successful, anyone over five can donate. Especially Miss Shuryu, who is still young, will need a lot less cells than an ordinary person. Afterwards, the doctor explained a series of problems in this regard. After Gu Yi roughly understood the situation, she turned around and left. Gu Yi stood in the corridor for a while. She waited until the moisture in her eyes had completely dried up before turning around and entering Sher Yu's ward. With the help of the doctor, the fever on Sher Yu's body had gradually subsided. Although it had not returned to normal, it was only a matter of time. Gu Yi squatted down on Sher Yu's bed, hugging Xiaoma and looking at the little man on the bed. Mommy's sister will be fine, right? Xiaoma suddenly turned his head and stared fixedly at Gu Yi. Gu Yi's eyes, which had just returned to normal, immediately turned red again. She took a deep breath, nodded at Xiaoma, and said forcefully, Yes, my sister's health will definitely recover. Her words were relaxed, but only Gu Yi knew how desperate and fearful she really was. She really wanted to call Yi Yi and tell him everything, then lay in his arms and let out a wild cry, but her rationality did not allow her to do so. The Bauhinia Bay project in Yi was similarly difficult to deal with. At this time, Yi was tired of that work, so she could not disturb him anymore. But I'm really tired in my heart. Mommy, I'm sorry. It's all because I didn't take good care of my sister. 
That's why Shiryu is like this. In order to conceal her emotions, Gui buried her head in Xiaomao's embrace. She thought that this way, Xiaomao would not be able to see her red eyes. However, she did not notice it. Therefore, the movements in her hands became heavier and made Xiaomao feel more clearly the pain in her heart. If I hadn't accidentally fallen asleep at noon, sure you wouldn't have caught a cold and had a fever. Mommy didn't have to cry so sadly. Xiaoma grew up beside Gui, and the mother and son were dependent on each other. Even during the most difficult period, she had never seen Mommy like this. Mommy, who had always been strong, cried this time. It could be imagined how sad she felt in her heart. Hearing Xiaoma's self-blaming words, Gu Yi's body trembled. She sensed something and raised her head to her son. Only then did she realize that Xiaoma's eyes were red. Idiot! Gu Yi gently touched the top of Xiaoma's head and said softly, Sister's illness and fever have nothing to do with you falling asleep. Don't embarrass yourself because of this. Actually, if it wasn't for her, sure you wouldn't be like this. Really? Hearing Gu Yi's words, Xiaoma asked back. Perhaps she was wondering if she had purposely said that to comfort him. It was not a good thing that his son was too smart. Gui sighed in her heart. Then he grabbed Xiaoma's arms, looked into his tender eyes, and said seriously. Of course it's true. After Gu Yi finished speaking, Xiaoma blinked her eyes. Then she turned her head to look at her sister lying on the bed. Her tense body softened. Gu Yi knew that from now on he really believed her words. But Xiaoma, if one day you were the only one in this world who could save Shiryu, what would you do? Although the doctor said that others still had a chance, Gui had an inexplicable feeling that this small possibility would eventually fall on Xiaoma. Xiaoma himself is still a child, can he really extract his own hematopoietic stem cells to Shiryu? And would he be willing? Under Gu Yi's nervous gaze, Xiaoma's originally dim eyes suddenly lit up. A slightly gentle hand grabbed Gu Yi's hand and asked nervously, Really? Then what should I do? At this moment, Xiaoma's eyes were filled with vigor, like every time he encountered an interesting toy, full of vitality and yearning. I heard it seems like you're going to draw blood. You might feel very painful then. Gui whispered to the happy Xiaoma. So what? There was no fear on Xiaoma's face. Instead, it was all excitement and excitement. She's my sister, my only sister. As long as I can save her, I don't care. Gu Yi opened her mouth and was finally defeated by Xiao Ma's sincerity. Neither of them spoke. They quietly stayed in front of the hospital bed and looked at Shiryu. Yu. During that time, Xin Yu called and asked about Shiryu's Yu's condition. After all this time, Gu Yi's mood had calmed down a lot, so if she was asked again, she could answer calmly. The doctor said it was a plastic anemia, so I will probably stay in the hospital and watch Shiryu Yu during this period of time. I can only leave the company to you. The method was known, but before she could find a suitable hematopoietic stem cell, before the operation was successful, and before Shiryu's Yu's body completely recovered, Gui thought that she probably didn't want to go to the company. Disorder anemia. Shin Yu was also shocked when he heard the news. Then did you call the chapter 480 he's back? Gui had thought about this question, but she didn't do it in the end. Shin Yu, you should know that he should be very busy at this time. He doesn't have time at all. Gu Yi naturally wanted to find someone to share such a big and difficult problem, but she only wanted to. In fact, Gu Yi and Yi Yi used to be the helmsmen of a company. Naturally, she knew how busy Yi Yi would be as the CEO of the company at such a time. Therefore, Gu Yi stood alone in the corridor for a long time, but she still didn't call Yi Yi. Gu Yi was silent on one side, and Xin Yu was also silent on the other side. After a long time, Xin Yu's voice came from the other side of the arc. Sister-in-law, stay in the hospital with Shiryu. There's no need to worry about the company. However, I think it's better to inform him about the boss. The business of the company is important, but the business of Shiryu is equally important. The difference was that the company could not be established anymore, but if there was no one left, there would really be no one left. Gui was silent. She looked in the direction of the Shiryu ward and fell into silence. After a long time, she spoke. I see. Let me think about it. After saying this, Gui hung up the phone and quickly returned to the ward. Gui didn't know what was going on with the Bohemia Bay project outside, nor did she know what was going on with E Corporation outside. All of her attention was on her daughter. At seven o'clock in the evening, sure you finally woke up. The little girl's face was deathly pale. Her originally watery eyes now looked even more misty. She extended her hand to Gui because she could not speak, babbling. Her cute little appearance made people's hearts soften. 
Gu Yi immediately picked up little Sherway and slowly walked around the room with her as usual. I don't know because I slept so much during the day, still feeling unwell, sure you kept babbling until dawn before she finally fell asleep. Gu Yi stayed by the bed and looked at Sher Yu's face. Her eyelids also became heavy. At this moment, footsteps suddenly came from the door. Gu Yi heard the sound and turned around to see Yi Yi who had just opened the door to the ward and was about to walk in. Looking at the man who suddenly appeared at the door of the ward, Gu Yi was stunned. It took her a long time to regain her senses. Why are you back? At this moment, because Yi Yi hadn't rested well for many days, there was already a dark room on his eyelids and there was also a dark room on his chin. His clothes were wrinkled and he looked like a refugee who had escaped. It was Xin Yu who called me. Yi Yi said, perhaps because he hadn't spoken for a long time and his voice was a little hoarse. Did you still want to take responsibility for such a big thing without telling me? I know it shouldn't be like this but... Nothing. But you have me. We'll shoulder it together. Before Gui could finish her words, her body was tightly hugged by Yi Yi. She carried a dusty aura, but she tightly hugged her into her embrace. At the same time, the uneasy feeling in Gu Yi's heart was greatly reduced. All right, let's face it together. At this moment, the sky was still not completely bright and gray. Gu Yi asked Mama Li to look at Sher Yu while she took Yi Yi to the next room to wash up. She then prepared some food for him and watched as he finished eating. Only then did she feel relieved. All right, you can rest here after you finish eating. Gu Yi turned around and was about to leave, but before she could leave, her hand was grabbed. I'm sleeping here. What about you? Where are you going? Go look at Sher Yu next door. Gu Yi was a little scared, afraid that if she turned around, she would no longer be able to see her daughter's figure. Yi Yi was silent as he stared at Ching Hei who was no better than him at the corner of Gu Yi's eyelids. Sher Yu is right next door and can't run. Wait for us to sleep and see her. Although Yi Yi was also worried about her daughter, she was still a bit more rational than Gu Yi. Go to the mirror and look at yourself. If you don't rest and wait for your daughter to recover, you will become another patient. How can you take care of her? But Gui still hesitated. It's nothing. If you still insist, then I'll go with you. As Yi spoke, she was about to stand up, but seeing Yi's obvious exhaustion, how could Gui bear it? All right, I'm not going anymore. Hurry up and go to bed. Although her brain was very tired, she was really lying on the bed, but Gu Yi's head couldn't sleep anymore. How's the Bohemia Bay project? Are you done? If Gu Yi had not been certain when the incident had started, she was now very sure that someone was really causing trouble behind the scenes. Yes, the people who need to be comforted have already been comforted. The rest of the follow-up matters will be handled by someone. Yi Yi interrupted Gu Yi bluntly, Shen Yu also told me about the company. We will handle these matters, so you don't have to worry. I've already asked the doctor about Sure Yu. I've already sent someone to find a matching hematopoietic stem cell. I believe news will be sent soon. So, don't worry so much anymore. Listening to Iya's orderly arrangement of these things, Gu Yi's heart finally felt a sense of stability. Thank you, Yi. After Gu Yi finished speaking, there was no sound coming from the room for a long time. Only a regular aura could be heard. Sure enough, he was still too tired. Gui smiled and said goodnight to Yi Yi in her heart. She closed her eyes and quickly fell asleep. Perhaps it was because of someone accompanying her, Gu Yi slept a lot more peacefully. By the time she woke up again, the sky was already bright, and on the other side of the bed, Yi Yi's figure had disappeared. Gu Yi was a little absent-minded. Soon after, she got up. She put on her clothes and walked towards Shi Yu's room. Sure enough, she saw Yi Yi sitting in front of her daughter's bed by the door that had not been completely closed. She looked at Shiryu with a heartache on her face. Gui looked at the door for a long time. When she felt that it was almost time, she slowly walked inside. It's still early. Why don't you sleep a little longer? Although Yi Yi didn't tell her what had happened to the project last night, she knew that it wouldn't be too easy. Hearing the voice, Yi Yi turned around and looked at the woman in front of him with a smile, Don't worry, I'm fine. Knowing that Yi Yi was worried about Shiryu, Gu Yi did not say anything else. The two of them sat beside the hospital bed like ordinary parents. They looked at their daughter's pale face and were extremely worried. Not long after, the door to the ward was opened. A tired Shen Yu appeared in front of the two of them. Looking at Shiryu's pale face, his heart ached, but he knew that he could not help. After asking, he let Yi Yi go out with him. Gui knew that they must have been discussing the company's affairs together, so she didn't mind sitting by the bed and guarding Shiryu. 
Outside the ward, Shin Yu looked at the similarly exhausted men opposite him and said somewhat annoyingly, Sorry, this time the company is in this situation because of me. In this media scandal, one third of all the documents were copied from my font and distributed to the bottom, which is why such a thing happened. Shin Yu was the director of the company, but he had an unshirkable responsibility to let people use his name to do such a thing under his nose. Rather than blame yourself here, why don't you think about how to solve this problem? As Yi spoke, his black eyes looked out of the transparent glass window. His gaze was erratic and he didn't know what he was looking at. Did the mole in the company find out? Regulators in large companies like E Corporation are very strict, but there are still such problems. It can only mean one thing, there is a mole inside the company. Moreover, the problem was even more serious. There was more than one mole and they were all in a very critical position. Otherwise, they would never have done such a thing. Found it. It's my Shin Yu and the CFO of the company, said Secretary, in a low voice because he was in a bad mood. These two people were indeed quite important people. Even Yi Yi couldn't help but be shocked when he heard Shin Yu's words. He turned to look at Shin Yu. Sensing Yi Yi's surprise, Shin Yu couldn't help but smile bitterly. It was because I didn't manage my emotions properly and my emotions were unstable that I let those people take advantage of me. Because of some special reasons, Shin Yu's mood has always fluctuated during this period of time. As Shin Yu, it is not surprising that secretary noticed something that no one else noticed. It's only now that I discovered that this secretary beside me actually possesses a special skill in imitating himself. If he hadn't been too anxious for information, he wouldn't have gone straight to secretary's office. Of course, he wouldn't have found his notes on his personal notebook in secretary. Although Shin Yu was careless, he would never not even know that he had signed secretary's personal notes. Compared to the documents that appeared in the finance department and were signed by him, if he still couldn't think of anything, it would be a waste of his reputation as a smart person. Compared to my secretary, our CFO is smarter. He used love as a weapon to capture my secretary. Not only did he let her monitor my movements, he also asked her to help him forge some documents. That's why there are so many transfer orders that we don't know about. During that period of time, because of Gu Yi 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 did not have the mood to handle official business. Everything was handled by Shin Yu, so even if he felt that something was wrong, as long as he saw the document signed by Shin Yu, those people would not say anything. Chapter 481 A Man of Death Not to mention that this method was really effective if it wasn't for the outbreak of the Bauhinia Bay Project, they wouldn't have discovered this problem until now. However, what is even more unexpected is that there seems to be someone behind our CFO. According to the people surveyed, she is a woman. Moreover, this woman is also very good at hiding. Those people have followed her for so long, but they still haven't found out who she is. At first, everyone was a little surprised, but soon, they were relieved. If they didn't even have this ability, how could they turn out such a huge storm? Just who do you think this woman is? As Shin Yu spoke, his eyes narrowed slightly. He looked at the man standing by the window and looking into the distance. He was covered in exhaustion and also attracted people's attention. You say, could it be a woman who was hurt by you again? At this moment, Shin Yu said that this sentence was entirely meant to mediate the atmosphere. He had no other thoughts, but what he did not know was that such an unintentional sentence was the entire truth of the matter. This was Shin Yu's last sentence. Yi Yi finally turned around. His dark and deep eyes stared motionlessly at the person opposite him. His gaze was so furry that Shin Yu's goosebumps started to rise. Only then did he beg for mercy. All right, don't look at me like that. I know I was wrong. Broken love always has some unusual performance, Yi Yi himself is also a person Shin Yu's words are naturally experienced. This is the only time. It won't happen again. Yi Ye's words were simple, but Shin Yu knew that this was letting him off the hook this time. Don't worry, this kind of thing is enough once. How could it happen again? Don't worry, I won't be alone again when this matter is settled, said Shin Yu with a smile on his face. But even though I caused this disaster, if it wasn't for your help, I wouldn't be able to clean it up by myself. Shin Yu said with a regretful expression, but the smile in the depths of his eyes could not be concealed. The two of them grew up together. It was him who helped Yi Yi clean up the mess. Now it was finally Yi Ye's turn to help him clean up the mess. How could Shin Yu not be secretly happy? Shin Yu didn't say anything when he noticed Yi Ye's inwardness. He frowned slightly and said calmly, remember, this is the only chance. All right one at a time. Don't be too greedy. Shin Yu knows this very well. There must be someone else behind these two. I have already sent someone to follow them. I believe there will be news soon. Yes. 
A simple word could be considered Iya's answer to this matter. The business was over. Because sure you was still sick, the two men did not say anything about his thoughts. They quickly turned around and went back to the ward. By the time the two of them entered, sure you and Xiaoma were already awake. Xiaoma sat obediently on the table and ate her breakfast. Gui held sure you in one hand and a spoon in the other. Sure you ate in a small bite. Perhaps because he was sick and uncomfortable, sure you, who was usually very obedient, pouted this time. He was unwilling to eat. Seeing that the ward door was opened, sure you recognized his father who had not seen him for a long time. He hurriedly extended his small hand to him and shouted excitedly, Pa, pa, pa. Although sure you could not pronounce clearly, she could tell from her homophone that she was calling her father. Hearing Yi Ye's voice, Han Ning and Sure Yu's black eyes unconsciously softened. She stretched out her hands and hugged her daughter, whom she had not seen for many days. Sure Yu's little head was buried in Yi Ye's neck, rubbing against it continuously, making a kitten-like sound, his face full of dependence. Obviously, I often appear in front of little Sure Wei. Why doesn't she ask for a hug when she sees me? Looking at Sure Yu's dependence on Yi Ye, Shin Yu couldn't help but feel a little eaten. Gui laughed, the first smile she had ever revealed in so many days. If you really like children that much, then get married and have a baby by yourself in the future. Shen Yu and Li Yin were Gu Yi's friends. If they could really be together, Gu Yi would naturally be happy. As the few of them spoke, Shen Yu, who had refused to eat no matter how Gu Yi tried to coax her, was now sitting in Yi Ye's arms and eating obediently. She looked like a model baby. Compared to the warm atmosphere in the ward, the outside world was going to turn the world upside down. However, within a day, there was a lot of bad news for E Corporation. The workers who were injured in the Bauhinia Bay project started to make noise. It was said that they would be injured because the construction project in E Corporation was not up to standard, so there would be an accident. After the accident, not only did E Corporation not want to solve the problem, he only wanted to give them a little money to hide these things. The injured workers thought that doing so would encourage E Corporation's evil deeds, so they refused money to expose E Corporation's evil deeds. Of course, this is an official statement, and another version is that E Corporation did not give enough relief to these workers, causing the workers to feel dissatisfied, so they would step forward to expose these things. Although this statement wasn't very pleasant to hear, it was in line with the thoughts of many people. However, strangely, since the scandal broke out, no one in E Corporation has spoken up. It is so calm that it makes people feel a little strange. In this case, E Corporation's stock began to fall. Many people are watching this situation. It was night, and the liveliness of the day began to fade away. The night was enveloped by darkness, and it could cover up the traces of many people. An enchanting woman greeted at the entrance of the city's biggest night show. After getting off the car, she waved her 10 centimeters high heels and walked to the door of the night show. She was wrapped in a sequin short skirt and her wine-red hair loosened around her neck. It was hard to see what she looked like. However, those who could work at night were not ordinary people. Even if they did not see a woman's face, they could tell from the way she dressed and walked that the woman in front of them was definitely a beauty that could cause an ordinary man to scream. The woman took out a card from her handbag and handed it to the staff before quickly entering. In the night, the lights were red and the lights were green, and there were men and women holding each other unaffectionately everywhere. However, even when they saw this scene, the woman did not have any surprised expression on her face. It seemed that she was familiar with this situation long ago. Under the lead of the waiter, the woman quickly entered a private room that had already been prepared. Seeing the man sitting on the sofa, her red lips curled up slightly, revealing a charming smile. How is it? Have you finished what I told you to do? Little darling, don't mention such a disappointing thing the moment we meet. As the man spoke, a vulgar smile appeared on his face. He reached out and hugged the woman in his arms. His big hand fiercely pinched the woman's chest and said somewhat unhappily, it's been a long time since we met. Hurry up and hug her. Without waiting for the woman to speak, the man impatiently gagged the woman's mouth. His two hands were skillfully groping the woman's body, and he quickly took off the woman's clothes. The body is loved. Fu, the woman could not restrain herself from letting out a charming cry, but she did not forget her purpose of coming out. This made the man even more emotional. He reached out to take off his pants so that he could do his business, but because of the woman's resistance, he had no choice but to stop. Tell me, what exactly happened to the thing I wanted you to do? If you don't. The woman purposely paused, her tongue pressed against the man's chin and licked him lightly. She felt the man's body tremble for a moment before she said with satisfaction. 
I'm not in a good mood either. If I'm in a bad mood, I won't play with you anymore. The man's chin was blocked, and he knew that he would not cooperate with a woman unless he said so, so he sighed deeply, and then he opened his mouth. Of course I did what you told me. After E-Corporation's share price starts to fall tomorrow, I'll use the money in my hand to buy those shares. Perhaps if I'm lucky, perhaps the whole E-Corporation will belong to you too, so we don't have to hide abroad anymore. Thinking that the entire E-Corporation was his, the man's head was finally slightly sober from the sperm. The lust in his eyes faded away, revealing a greedy color. The whole of E-Corporation is yours. It's a beautiful idea. The woman's red lips curled into a mocking smile. Unfortunately, at this moment, the man was immersed in his own fantasies and didn't discover anything. Someone who had never owned wealth suddenly knew that he could own a large amount of wealth one day. Excitement was not something that could be controlled by control. Accompanied by the excitement, the man's lust was even higher. He picked up the wine glass and drank it. Before the woman could react, he blocked the woman's mouth, pried open her teeth, and drank the wine. The wine was poured too quickly. The woman was not prepared to breathe. She kept coughing. Her face was red and she had an unusual charming manner. The man's eyes were straight when he looked at her. Nana, as long as this matter is settled, the whole e-corporation will be mine. There is nothing but a face. Don't like him then. Do like me, okay? Hearing the familiar name, the woman's body stiffened slightly, but in the next second, she quickly recovered. A long time ago, I was young and ignorant. I really liked him for a while. However, my love for him disappeared when he destroyed me and my family. Right now, I only hate him and have no love for him. Not only that, she no longer loved anyone except her. Chapter 482 Stupid Man Of course, the woman said this in her heart. Men would never know so when they heard her say this, they revealed a wild smile. Good, good, good. Three consecutive good words were enough to express the excitement in a man's heart. He held the woman tightly in his arms as if he wanted to carve her into his bones. Nana, after this matter succeeds, I will divorce my wife. Will you marry me and stay with me forever? The man said as he stared at the woman in front of him. His eyes were focused and he looked like he loved the woman in front of him very much. Looking at the infatuation in the man's eyes, Song Myona's self-confidence, which had been shocked to the point of extinction in Yi, finally recovered a little. Yi did not love her. It was his own bad taste. If he did not appreciate her, there would always be people who would appreciate her beauty. Otherwise, why would the CFO of E Corporation in front of her, Iyi's right-hand man, choose to betray Iyi and kowtow under her pomegranate dress. Although much of this betrayal is due to covetousness for E Corporation's money, so what? Anyway, she didn't care about feelings anymore. Love is the floating clouds in the horizon. It can float away at any time. Only the power in one's hand is real. Thinking about it, Song Miona bent down and pecked at the man's tail. At the same time, her hand moved down the man's body and accurately touched a hot spot. She gently pinched it. He said that if I didn't want to be with you forever, why would I be like this? With that, the man shouted and immediately pounced on the woman. The so-called fights between demons began. The two of them were quite energetic. It would be more than three hours before the clouds and rain stopped for the first time. The two of them put on their clothes and wanted to take advantage of the darkness to go home. Unexpectedly, the door to the private room had only just opened when the two of them froze in place. A few hours ago, the pride and arrogance on their faces had long disappeared without a trace and turned pale. Even cold sweat oozed out from their foreheads. President, Director Shin, why are you here? Ran Hui never imagined that Yi, who was supposed to be busy dealing with the crash at the construction site at Bohemia Bay, and Shin Yu, who was supposed to be making out with his girlfriend, would appear here at the same time when he opened the door. Seeing them here at the same time, did that mean that they already knew everything they had painted? Once this thought appeared in his heart, Ren Hui's heart started to beat wildly uncontrollably. The corner of his eyes glanced at the woman beside him, and the feeling of unease grew even more intense. Since we're not here, where do you think we should be now? Shen Yu sneered as he crossed his chest and looked at Ren Hui in front of him. All right, Ren Hui, I've known you for so long, but I didn't know you were so capable. Even we should know where we are at this time. Indeed, it should be said that his ability was not bad, otherwise, how could he even bribe the people beside him? As he spoke, Shin Yu tilted his head to look at the woman beside Ren Hui and mocked her mercilessly, one at home, one at work, one outside. It's quite a blessing. Am I here to disturb you at this time? Director Shin, hearing Shin Yu's words, his face was wrinkled and he was about to cry. 
in the company compared to Yi, who was quiet and cold, Xing Yi was always easy to talk to and considerate of. But now he actually did not conceal his anger and sneered at people in front of him. It seemed that he was really anxious. And from what Xing Yi said, Ren Hui was sure that they knew what he was planning. Thinking of this, Ren Hui's legs went limp and he knelt uncontrollably on the ground. Looking at Ren Hui's useless appearance, Xin Yu immediately lost interest. He actually wanted to take advantage of the fact that they weren't usurping the company. He thought that he was very capable, but in the end he revealed his true colors in a single meeting. It was really boring. As the two of them spoke, Yi Yi stood beside them. Even if he didn't say anything, no one would ignore his existence. Seeing that Ran Hui wasn't speechless, Xin Yu turned to look at Yi Yi. It was good that he didn't look. He just met Yi Yi's emotionless eyes and opened his mouth, only to find that he couldn't say anything. Ran Hui, you've disappointed me too much. These words were the first words that Yi Yi said today. The simple words made people feel cold as if they were running into snow. The position of CFO is very important in any company, especially for multinationals like Yi Corporation. Compared to the average person, Ran Hui, who graduated from a prestigious university, was not bad, but compared to those who graduated from a prestigious university and had worked for many years, he was nothing compared to those who had rich experience. If it wasn't for Iye's praise and promotion these past few years, how could he have achieved the position of CFO of E Corporation? But now he actually betrayed Iye and wished to take his place. It seemed that after so many years of prestige and privilege, his heart had been nurtured. President, I'm sorry. All greed and desire vanished without a trace when they saw that pair of cold eyes. The desire and hope faded away, the reason returned, and the only thing left in his heart was regret. However, even if they regretted it, all they had done was do it. They could no longer return to the past. Other than apologizing to Ran Hui, they didn't know what else to say. Of course, Xin Yu and Yi Yi didn't need him to say anything about betrayers. Xin Yu raised his hand. Someone immediately appeared in front of them and bent down to take Ran Hui away. Wait! Just as he was about to be taken away, Ran Hui suddenly spoke. I know I don't have the face to speak now, but I still want to say something. Yi Yi had no expression on his face and Xin Yu frowned. After a while, Xin Yu turned his head to look at Yi Yi. Seeing that he was expressionless, he reluctantly said, Say what you want to say. After this village, there will be no such shop. Ran Hui nodded and said with some difficulty, I know that Nana did something wrong this time, but can you let her go once? She is already in a sorry state. Xin Yu listened, his chin almost falling off. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Ran Hui nodded with some difficulty. Xin Yu snorted coldly. Just as he was about to refuse, Yi Yi opened his mouth. Why do you want me to let her go? Yi Yi's eyes were silent, and his face was expressionless, just like a puppet just like the person who had just spoken, not him. Because I love her, I don't want her to continue suffering. Love? Xin Yu snorted coldly and raised his hand. He pointed at the expressionless woman standing beside him, who didn't even react when he saw Ran Hui kneeling and crying. You said you loved her? Do you know what kind of woman she is? Recently, what happened between Gu Yi and Song Miona had spread like wildfire in the city. Xin Yu didn't believe that Ran Hui didn't even know about this. I know. Ren Hui answered yes, but he still did not change his mind. I know all those things, but I still love her. Love her? Love her so much that even your wife and son can be ignored? Speaking of his wife and son, Ren Hui's face was filled with bitterness, but he still nodded. It lost. Xin Yu was so angry that he didn't even want to say anything. If Ren Hui didn't know who Song Miona was, he might even praise him for being infatuated with love, but he clearly knew what kind of woman Song Miona was now, and he couldn't find another word to describe him besides the word, idiot. For such a crazy woman, abandoning her family's children and wife and throwing herself into prison was not something that could be described as stupid. I know I'm sorry for them, and I know that you know that I'm stupid, but who told me to grow up and love her alone? Ren Hui was ambitious, but he was not an idiot. After following Yi Yi and Xin Yu in Yi Corporation for so many years, how could he not understand their methods and abilities? But so what if he was getting to know her? When he received a phone call from a girl he had been secretly in love with for many years, his heart was so excited that it almost jumped out of his heart. Because of Song Miana's identity and her obvious liking for Yi Yi, Ran Hui had never thought that she would have any connection with her, so she followed the arrangements of her family to get married and have children. However, even though he knew that there would never be a chance between them, he still hoped that she would be fine from the bottom of his heart. 
However, this thought was just an extravagant hope. When he saw the song Miona scandal in the video, he had the intention to kill the whistleblower. Therefore, when Song Miona asked him to do something for her, Ren Hui agreed without much hesitation. Seeing the man kneeling on the ground, no longer as calm and elegant as before, Shin Yu could only sigh. You want me to let her go? Just as Ran Hui was immersed in an uncontrollable love affair, Yi Yi suddenly crouched down in front of Ran Ran Hui. This made Ran Hui think that he saw some hope. Of course. As long as you let her go, I will do whatever you want me to do. I? Just like this, what can you do for me? What? The transformation was too fast. Ran Hui's head was rusty and he couldn't react. There are so many people who want to do things for me. Do you really think I'm lacking someone like you? Ren Huey's eyes widened and he smiled excitedly because he knew that the show was about to be Chapter 483 I Poison a Snake Someone who doesn't even remember his surname. He's heartless, ungrateful, and ungrateful. No one dares to boast that he can do anything for me. Ren Hui, is it because you're too confident in yourself or because I'm too kind to you? Fortunately, you can't even see how much weight you have. President E. U. It could be said that Ren Hui had worked in E Corporation for so many years and occasionally made mistakes. However, E Yu was still tolerant of him, so he rarely faced E as sharp words. However, what he had done today had clearly overdrawn E as tolerance for him in an instant. Something so important in your mouth that you can give up everything is worse than trash in my opinion. In the past, I thought you were a little smart, but now it seems like you're just stupid to the extreme, so you weren't discovered. Not only can smart men manage their careers well, they should also know what kind of people are suitable for them and who should hide far away. To Ran Hui, Song Miona was the person who had already dodged but had managed to get close to her. Such an evaluation, but the poisonous snake was also accurate. Indeed, it was indeed worthy of being called Yi Yi. It had been a long time since Shin Yu had heard such a thing from his mouth, but now he felt that he was not used to it. And Ran Hui, who had never heard of him before, was already dumbfounded. Want to know what will happen to Song Miona? As he spoke, the corners of Iya's mouth curved upwards. It was beautiful, but it also gave off a kind of evil aura. Ran Hui's entire body was stiff. He wanted to shake his head, but his chin unconsciously lowered. Then just sit here and watch what happens to her. Bind him to the side with a rope and let him open his eyes and take a good look. Ran Hui had other things to say about Yi, but no matter how many times he said it, he was still self-righteous. Yi Yi had nothing to say about women who didn't know why. Last time, when she let her go, she didn't know how to restrain herself and she still wanted to play tricks in the back, so there was no need to leave any trouble for her. Not long after Yi Yi finished speaking, someone quickly came over with a rope. In a few seconds, he turned Ran Hui into a dumpling and casually threw it in the corner to ensure that he could see what was going on. When Yi Yi and Shin Yu taunted Ran Hui, Song Miona always stood by the side. No matter what they said, she didn't make a sound. After experiencing the bankruptcy of Song Corporation, Song Miona had already walked out of that unrealistic fantasy. I have been destroyed by you, and Song Corporation has been destroyed by you. Now that I have nothing left, what else can you do to me? The moment she opened the door and saw Shin Yu and Yi Yi, Song Miona had already realized that she could not escape. Since there was no longer any fear left, he naturally spoke more casually to Yi Yi. Are you resenting me? Yi Yi raised his eyebrows and his expression was calm. Otherwise, what do you think? Song Miona's eyes widened as she looked at the man in front of her with a complicated expression. She had loved this man for a long time, but in the end, she was sent to hell. Or do you think I shouldn't hate you? If it wasn't for Yi Yi, how could he have lost everything he was proud of? Without old Madam Song and Song Corporation's protection, Song Miona's life wasn't so easy. She lived in a simple house that was comparable to a sewer. The stench that filled her room every day made her feel like she was vomiting. But no matter how much she resisted in her heart, she could only live here now. Now Song Miona was no longer the Song Miona of the past. After leaving this place, she had nowhere to go anymore. Thinking about the past year, Song Miona raised her hand uncontrollably, wanting to slap Yi Yi fiercely. However, before her hand touched Yi Ye's face, Yi Ye's hand had already landed on her face at an even faster speed. If hating me can make you feel more comfortable, then you should. With just a slap, Song Miona's face had already turned red and swollen. Blood flowed out from the corner of her mouth, looking extremely miserable. Yi Yi did not give Song Miona the time to adapt. She raised her hand and slapped down. Everyone could not see Yi Ye's movements clearly, only hearing the cracking sound in Song Miona's constantly deflecting head. 
Seeing Song Miona being beaten, Renhui kept twisting his body. He wanted to say something, but he couldn't say a word because he was blocked by the cloth. Shin Yu laughed loudly and patted Iya's shoulder heavily. Good job, bro. Only a slap can make a self-righteous woman understand what you're trying to say. Shin Yu guessed that Yi had been too gentle to Song Miona because of Song Corporation in the past. That was why he gave Song Miona the illusion that Yi loved her. Otherwise, how could he have done those things? If Yi had slapped her earlier, there probably wouldn't have been anything else. Yi tilted his head and looked at Shin Yu coldly, his eyebrows slightly raised, revealing a meaningful expression. Are you very excited to see her being beaten? Of course. It's not like you don't know, Shin Yu replied without hesitation. I've long since found this woman unpleasing to the eye. Then I'll leave her to you. You can teach her as much as you like. What about you? Shin Yu asked subconsciously, leave all this to me. What are you going to do? Go home to see your daughter. After saying those few words, Iya's figure had already disappeared from everyone's sight. Yes, too. Compared to these annoying people, the cute and soft Shiryu was naturally better looking. After a morning's rest in the hospital, Gu Yi had already found all possible donors of hematopoietic stem cells from Shiryu. As long as one of these people's hematopoietic stem cells matched Shiryu's, Shiryu would be saved. At this time, every minute and every second seemed incomparably precious. After an incomparably long wait, the doctor finally came out of the laboratory. Gui hurriedly welcomed him and looked at the doctor nervously. How about these people have bone marrow that matched your use? As she spoke, Gui felt as if her heart was hanging in her throat, pounding like it would stop beating in the next second. It all depends on what the doctor says. I'm sorry, madam. None of these people are suitable. No, why not? Because he was too excited, he deliberately rushed in front of the doctor and grabbed his sleeve tightly. He said in disbelief they didn't. What about Xiaoma? Does Xiaoma's bone marrow match your use? The doctor shook his head solemnly and said helplessly, Sorry, madam, the young masters and young Miss Bone Marrow doesn't match either. Doctors specialize in this, so he knows better than Gui what it would mean if Xiaoma and Shi Yu's bone marrow types don't match. It doesn't match, it actually doesn't match. In an instant, Gui only had these words left in her mind. If her bone marrow type did not match, what should she do with her shiryu? She's still so young, and her life has only just begun. She's like a flower. Could it be that she wants to? No, no, you can't do that. Doctor, can you try mine? Perhaps my bone marrow matches shiryu's. As for the bone marrow between parents and their children, even if they match, there will be rejection. What if they reject each other? As Gui spoke, her eyes stared fixedly at the doctor's face, not letting go of the slightest bit of expression on his face. Miss Sure Yu's life would be in imminent danger if there was any real rejection. So this was also the reason why doctors never thought of letting Gu Yi and Yi Yi have a bone marrow match with Sure Yu in the beginning. Then is there really no other way to put it that way? At this moment, he felt as if all of his strength had been sucked out, and he couldn't help but fall to the ground. Gu Yi! Little Yi! Madam! Everyone cried out worriedly when they saw you like this. At this moment, a figure flashed past the crowd. Before they could react, who is this? That person had already rushed in front of Gui and she was in her arms. Smelling the familiar smell, Gui didn't need to think about who was holding her. Yi, what exactly is our daughter going to do? Yi hugged Gui tightly, looking at her painful and desperate appearance. Wanting to embed her into his body, perhaps this way, he could share some of the pain. No, no. This is not the last moment. We will definitely find someone who matches the bone marrow. Sure you, that was the daughter he had been longing for 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 so long he definitely wouldn't let her disappear in front of him like this. At this moment, any words of comfort seemed so weak and pale. Everyone stood not far away and looked at the couple hugging each other silently. Ever since the doctor announced that she still hadn't found a bone marrow that matched Sure Yu's, Gui seemed to have lost her mind. Every day, she was in front of Shiryu's bed and didn't want to leave, as if she was afraid that she would never see Shiryu again after she left. Looking at Gui like this, Yi Yi felt extremely distressed. She could only accompany Xiaoma like Gui Shiryu, and at the same time, she used all her strength to find a matching bone marrow. Everything in the company had already been handed over to Shen Yu. He was so busy that he didn't even have time to eat all day. Only when Li Yingyan wanted him to call did he know about it. So if you want Shiryu to survive as long as you find the bone marrow that matches Shiryu, then he can survive, right? 
Theoretically, I can say that, but finding a matching bone marrow won't be easy in a short period of time. Otherwise, there wouldn't be many people who would say that disorder anemia is not the same as starting the countdown to life. Chapter 484 Never Give Up Since that's the case, why are you still sitting here? Hurry up and go to the hospital. Liang Nian hurriedly turned around and was about to leave when he was caught by Xin Yu before he could take a step forward. What are you doing in the hospital at this time? Of course I'm going to have a bone marrow test. One more person will give me hope. Xin Yu listen, a bitter smile appeared on his face, but he had to pull Li Yin to patiently explain it's useless. Generally speaking, the chances of marrow matching between relatives are very high, especially the chances of matching siblings of the same father and mother are very high. In this case, the chances of marrow matching between Xiaoma and Shi Yu are even lower. In fact, it was precisely because she knew these factors that Gu Yi felt even more desperate and collapsed. But a small chance doesn't mean there's no chance. Liang Yan grabbed Xin Yu's hand tightly and looked at him diligently, I know the chances are slim, but we can't give up until the last moment. Xin Yu looked at Liang Yan's resolute face and opened his mouth, not knowing what to say. The so-called miracle is a miracle when everyone is already in despair. Moreover, we are not at that stage yet. How can you just give up like this? Faced with Liang Yin's words, Xin Yu was speechless. All right, since you want to try, then go. Because the company had found the messenger behind it, it was much easier for Xin Yu to deal with such matters. Although Ran Hui was E Corporation's chief financial officer, there was nothing he could do other than steal Xin Yu's property secretly using documents signed by E Corporation. And the property had already been recovered after Xin Yu handed Ran Hui over to the Bureau of Commerce and Industry. As for the comments that were not good for e-corporation, they were just a means for Song Miona to profit from the group's turmoil. Such rumors were naturally cleared up after the Bureau of Commerce and Industry sent people to the construction site in e-corporation. Combined with the incident in Song Corporation last time, many people were secretly saying that when such a situation occurred, which group company should be secretly jealous of e-corporation, so they would create rumors. Facing such a situation, Xin Yu did not know whether to laugh or cry, but generally speaking it was still developing in a good direction. Xin Yu led Li Yin to the hospital where Shi Yu was. There was no rush to see little Shi Wei. Instead, we had a blood test with the doctor who was in Shi Yu's condition. Seeing the crimson blood flowing out of his veins, Li Yin felt a sense of security in his heart. After the blood was drawn out, Li Yin asked as he watched the doctor put the blood away. How long will it take for the doctor to find out if my bone marrow doesn't match your use? Two weeks. Two weeks. Isn't this too long? Hearing this, Li Yin frowned. This is very anxious. Is there a way to do it faster? The doctor looked up at Li Yin and shook his head. No, and this is already the fastest. Doctors will be as happy as sure you if they can really get results quickly enough to find a bone marrow that matches Li Yin's, because that means he doesn't have to endure someone's high pressure every day. And bone marrow matching is a very serious and cautious matter because if there is a problem, if the two bone marrow clearly do not match in surgery, will lead to the death of the patient. So no matter how anxious he was, the doctor did not dare to shorten the examination time. All right, Nin Yin, don't make things difficult for the doctor. Xin Yu said helplessly as he pulled Li Ying Yin out of the room. Even though we had a bone marrow match, we shouldn't tell boss and sister-in-law about this until we have a successful match. There would be no despair if there was no hope. Recently, Xin Yu had seen enough of Gu Yi and Yi Ye's pain from hope to despair because of the bone marrow matching. Of course I know. You think I'm stupid? Liang Yan curled his lips and glared at Xin Yu angrily. Xin Yu did not mind. Instead, he raised his hand to rub his short hair, his eyes filled with pampering and helplessness. The two of them stayed in the corridor of the hospital for a long time. They waited until they were sure that their emotions were almost hidden in their hearts before walking towards Shi Yu's ward. In the ward filled with disinfectant, Gu Yi's delicate face was already covered in tears and her clear eyes were filled with despair. I don't want to lose Shi Yu. I don't want to lose our daughter. Recently, Yi Yi had heard these words countless times. Every time he heard them, his heart was still in pain. It was as if he was watching someone else tear his heart apart, but he was helpless. No, it won't. I guarantee that nothing will happen to our daughter. In his entire life, although Yi Yi rarely made promises to anyone, he knew that every time he made a promise, he would definitely be able to do it. However, only this time what he said was absolute, but he didn't know if he could do it. Heh, so it's so painful to feel helpless. 
on the hospital bed, sure you lay there quietly, his face pale like a lifeless doll. Li Yin did not expect that he would hear such words just now. Seeing such a scene, his eyes immediately turned red, but he still bit his lower lip and did not let himself make a sound. Gu Yi and Yi Yi stayed in front of the hospital bed, staring blankly at Xiao Ma, while Xing Yu and Li Yin stood outside, staring blankly at them. This scene lasted for an unknown amount of time, and it wasn't until the afternoon when Xiaoma came back from school that he broke the terrible calm. By the time Xiaoma and Xinyu entered the ward, Gu Yi and Yi Ye's faces had returned to normal. However, as long as they looked carefully, they could still see the redness and swelling in Gu Yi's eyes. Sister Gu. At this time, language is pale and powerless, only hugging hard can give people some comfort. The two of them hugged each other tightly and separated after a long time. Gui looked a little strange and said, Why are you here at this time? Even though she said that, Gu Yi's gaze crossed Li Yin and looked at Xin Yu behind him. She thought that Xin Yu should have told him. Have you forgotten that I'm sure Yu's godmother? How can I not come at this time? Are you trying to cheat by saying that? Gui shook her head. Of course she didn't mean that. That's good. Otherwise, even if you're interesting, I won't listen to you. After saying that, Li Yin did not look at Gu Yi's reaction and directly turned to look at Shiryu on the bed. At this time, Shiryu had already woken up. His big eyes were blurry and it was obvious that he hadn't woken up from his sleep yet, but his big brother was hugging him in his arms. Even though he was still a villain, he still insisted on hugging Shiryu and rolling around with a dumpling-like child. Come to Shiryu and give my godmother a hug. As Li Yin spoke, he extended his hand towards Shiryu and made a gesture of hugging. Sure you heard the voice and looked up at Li Yin. Her eyes were confused. It had been a long time since she had seen Li Yin. She had already forgotten about her. Li Yin pursed his lips and said somewhat pitifully, Wow, you forgot about me not long after I left this time, sure you. Sure you isn't even a year old yet. It's normal that I haven't seen you for so long to forget you. As Shen Yu said that he squatted down and extended his hands towards sure you, making a gesture of hugging him. Come to Shiryu and give uncle a hug. Little Shirway stared blankly at Shinyu with his eyes wide open, as if he was confirming something. After a while, a smile appeared on his face. He twisted his little body and really twisted his body towards Shinyu. Shinyu hugged Shiryu and turned to face Li Yin, his face full of pride. Look, if you want little Shirway to hug you, you can stay here if you have time. Accompany little Shirway more. Then she will naturally let you hug you next time. Of course, if Li Yin lived here, he would spend more time with her. Li Yin pouted and deliberately made an angry appearance. I think Shir Yu's big eyes met her small eyes. However, not long after, she couldn't hold on anymore. She made a cute expression towards Shir Yu, hoping to lure her from Shin Yu's embrace into her embrace. With Li Yin's jokes and deliberately acting cute, the atmosphere in the ward was much better. Seeing that it was already dark and there were so many people in the room, Li Yin asked Shen Yu to get some food back. Because just as he reached the door, the door was pushed open from outside before his hand could touch it. Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen, who hadn't seen each other for a long time, actually appeared at the door. Their eyes were wide open as they looked into the ward, their expressions somewhat strange. Big brother, second brother, why did you come here otherwise? You're not here to catch her, are you? Looking at the two people at the door, Li Yin thought guiltily. The two of them walked into the ward and stood beside Gui, their eyes fixed on her. No matter how one looked at it, such a scene was somewhat strange. Xin Yu coughed softly. Just as he was about to speak, Li Yin said, Big brother, second brother, what are you doing? There was no doubt that it was extremely rude for the two men to stare at a woman like this. According to Li Yin's understanding of them, they would not normally do such rude things. It was strange for them to suddenly do so today. Li Ruhen still looks at Gu Yi. Li Ruichen turns to look at Li Yin and says, Nin Yin, big sister has found it. Found it. Li Yin repeated Li Ruichen's words in a daze but his expression was blank. Obviously, there was no meaning in this sentence in his mind. On the other hand, Xin Yu and Yi Yi seemed to have realized something. They turned to look at Li Ruichen, who was still staring at Gu Yi, and an idea occurred to them at the same time. Could it be that the eldest sister they had just found after a long time was Gu Yi? Chapter 485 She Is Her it had to be said that this idea was indeed unpredictable and bizarre. However, behind the abnormal behavior of Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen, it was normal for them to make such a guess. Seeing Li Ruihen like this, Gu Yi also felt strange in her heart. However, she did not have the same thoughts as Yi Yi and Xin Yu. 
Although Zhang Qishan was very trash, the blood relationship between the two of them could not be interrupted. She could be considered to have grown up beside her parents since childhood, so how could she suddenly become a child of another family? In this gap, Li Yin finally reacted. He took three steps together and hurriedly walked to Li Ruichen's side. He grabbed his hand and asked anxiously, I found her. You said I found her. Who is she and where is she now? Because of the excitement of Li Yin's strength, Li Ruichen's hands hurt, but he didn't stop her. Her name is Gui. In this ward, she is the person you see in front of you. Li Ruhen said this and looked at Gui without blinking. Indeed. After Li Ruhen finished speaking, this thought arose in Xin Yu and Iya's hearts at the same time. Although it was still a bit strange, they did not say anything. They stood at the side and watched the development of the matter quietly. Sister Gu is actually my sister. As Li Yin said this, he slowly walked to Gu Yi's side step by step. His small face was tightly wrinkled and his eyes were filled with disbelief. So my sister, whom I've been looking for for so long, is actually by my side. After saying those words, Li Yin finally reacted completely from this sudden situation. He stretched out his hand and hugged Gu Yi tightly. Gu Yi was hugged tightly by Li Yin. She felt that her breathing had become somewhat difficult. She raised her hands wanting to hug Li Yin, but she did not dare to do so. Could it be that you've made a mistake? How could I be the person you're looking for? As she spoke, Gui looked up at Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen, hoping that the two of them could give her a reasonable explanation. Li Mian also let go of Gui when she heard this and turned to look at Li Ruihen and Li Ruichen. That's right, how did you find out? Li Yin liked Gui very much and had always treated her as her elder sister from the bottom of her heart. Even if she found out that she was not her own elder sister, she would not create any estrangement. However, if it was true, she would be extremely happy. Facing Li Yin's questioning, Li Ruhin shifts her gaze away from Gu Yi. Do you remember why you ran away from home last time? Of course, Li Yin said without hesitation, but I was out looking for someone, not running away from home. Anyway, no one agreed and you secretly ran away. Is it any different from coming out? Li Ruhin glances at Li Yin sideways as she speaks, her disdain is very obvious. What Li Yin hated the most was Li Ruihen's expression. He left Gu Yi's side, walked in front of Li Ruihen, and reached out to hit him. Just as Lin Yan's hand was about to hit Li Ruihen, Li Ruihen twisted her body, turned around and dodged his attack with a mocking smile on her face. With your skill, you want to hit me and cultivate for a few more years? You seeing Li Ruihen like this, Li Yin was so angry that his face turned red. All right, stop messing around. Li Ruichen is not surprised by such a situation. Apart from helplessness, there is no other unnecessary expression on his face. He is obviously used to it. There are still serious matters to talk about. Hearing this, Li Yan and Li Ruihen finally stopped fighting and quietly stood there waiting for the story to develop. Actually, the last time we received news that our lost sister was probably here, Rui Han and I were originally prepared to get up and look for someone here. But because of Nian's disappearance, we temporarily interrupted this matter. They really wanted to get their lost sister back. Not bad, but it was definitely not a prerequisite for them to lose their little sister. Because of the disappearance of their ideas, they had no choice but to temporarily abandon this plan. After finding Li Yin, their time off had expired and they had no choice but to return. Only then did they delay for a period of time. Then, after some time, we will continue to search. The informant reported that a woman who had just given birth to a child disappeared from the place where I lost my sister. After my sister was lost, she also disappeared from that place. So I followed this clue and found out that the woman was actually Gu Yi's mother. Back then, the person who carried Li Ruichen's sister was Gu Yi's mother, and her name had always been only one daughter, so Gu Yi was naturally their sister-slash-sister. -sister. But but... Gu Yi feels her head is in a mess. She understands Li Rue Chen's words, but she doesn't quite understand. She feels that something is strange. You don't have to worry. I know that it will be hard for you to accept such a thing, but it's true. If you still don't believe it, we can do a DNA comparison with human hair right now. Li Rue Chen's words were gentle, neither anxious nor slow, which made Gu Yi's nervousness and confusion dissipate a lot. Anyway, this is a hospital, so it's very convenient to do DNA comparisons. Gui nodded, agreeing to the proposal. When she saw that she and Li Ruichen's hair were sent to the laboratory together, her mood became very complicated. During this period of time, Yi stayed by Gu Yi's side. Relaxation is just a test. 
It doesn't matter if your life hasn't changed much. If it was true, then Gui could have more loved ones. If not, it wouldn't be bad. Anyway, she was married and had their own home, and they would always be by her side. Gui leaned against Iya's embrace and nodded after a long time, accepting this matter. Big brother, second brother, are you really sure that Sister Gu is the person we are looking for? Of course, are you worried about my ability to handle matters? Li Ruihan said she was ready to stare at Li Yingyan angrily. It had to be said that although Li Ruihan often fought with Li Yingyan, Li Yingyan knew his ability. Hearing this, he felt relieved. Seeing Li Ruichen know Li Ruichen nodded his head, Xian Tao immediately smiled treacherously. Since that's the case, then follow me. There's an arduous task waiting for you. An arduous task? Li Ruihen and Li Ruichen couldn't help but feel a little puzzled when they heard this. It was Xin Yu who looked at Li Yingyan's complacent appearance and laughed. At the same time, some hope rose in his heart. The place Li Yingyan took Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen to was naturally the office of the attending physician in Shiryu. The things he did were the same as when he came earlier. If Gu Yi was really the person they were looking for, that was to say, compared to other strangers, their bone marrow was much more likely to match Shiryu's sure bone marrow. They had already done what they had to do, and it was no longer them who would develop into what happened next. While waiting for the result, Shiryu's sure illness had temporarily stabilized, and they moved back to the villa, where a bunch of people lived together, and it was bustling with excitement. Meanwhile, Li Ruichen was like the elder brother that Gu Yi had hoped for when she was a child. When she was free, she told Gu Yi everything about the Li family in detail. Although Li Ruihen did not say anything, she was much warmer towards Shiryu and Xiaoma. She was even better than her sister Li Yingyan and made Li Yingyan jealous. Perhaps it was the feeling of getting along well with the Li sisters that made Gu Yi really think that she was the person they were looking for. However, for the sake of being proper, Gu Yi still surprised Gu Yi by saying things that Zhang Kersen did not want Zhang Kersen to say. I don't know if you're the person they're looking for, but you're not dad's daughter. This was the first sentence that Zhang Kersen had given after he had deliberately finished speaking. Actually, you're just the daughter that Aunt Gu brought over. Although she was mentally prepared, Gu Yi still opened her eyes wide when she heard Zhang Kersen's words. You should be wondering why I said that, right? Although Gu Yi did not say anything, Zhang Kersen could tell what she was thinking from her expression. Gu Yi nodded. She was indeed very curious about this question, but the person who could best verify it was already dead, so she could only listen to Zhang Kersen. At that time, I was very young. I didn't come to your house for long, right? Your mother was very sad because of our appearance. Once she sat beside you when you were asleep and accidentally told me about this matter. Her daughter died of a fever, because of this she was so miserable that she went mad at that time. Then she went to a thatched cottage and saw you there alone, so she carried you back. So I don't know if you're the person they're looking for, but you're definitely not my sister. Later, your mother found out that I knew about this matter and made a deal with me so that I would never tell anyone about it. But is John Kersen that trustworthy? Gui was very suspicious. Because I have something on him. As for why, don't ask. I won't tell you. However, I can guarantee that everything I said this time is true. It's up to you to decide whether you believe it or not. Actually, what John Kersen didn't say was that, because of that agreement, although she didn't tell anyone about this matter, she deliberately framed Gui in the following days. Who let her steal her father? It could be seen that John Kersen still had a lot of things to say, but Gui wanted to believe it. So she was really picked up by someone. Was she the Lee family's? Chapter 486 Do You Hate Me? Today's day seemed to be very long and very short, but what happened during this time was like a dream to Gu Yi, showing such an unreal energy. She had always thought that her parents were not her real parents, and that Li Yingyan's parents were her own parents. Moreover, not only did they not love her, they had instead been looking for her with great effort. Yi Yi, do you think what Zhang Kersen said will be true? Before Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen could say anything about it, Li Yingyan had already told Gu Yi a lot about her parents. At that time to Gu Yi, it was just like listening to a story. But now the story actually happened to her. She didn't know whether she should be happy or sad. In the moonlight, Gu Yi's expression was somewhat confused. Seeing this, Yi Yi's heart ached. Holding Gu Yi's face with both hands, he let her look at him. We don't care about Li Ruichen and Li Ruihen's words for now, but you just need to tell me, do you think this is true or false? That was the question on his mouth, but Yi Yi already had an answer in his heart. Although Gui said that she did not care about Zhang Qishan's father's love, she was actually envious in her heart. 
It was only because she knew from the beginning that she would not be able to obtain it that she restrained her thoughts. But now she suddenly knew that her biological parents had someone else, and how could she not yearn in her heart if she loved her so much? Of course I do, but... There's nothing wrong. After the test results come out, if Li Ruichen's parents are really your parents, then you just need to calm down and accept their kindness to you. If it weren't for what had happened back then, why would Gui have suffered so much from wandering outside? I really want to be like what you said. They have been insisting on Gui for all these years. Now that they have finally found it, it should be them who treat Gui better. You don't need to think about anything now. Just rest well and wait for the results. Gui looked into Iya's deep, pitch black eyes. How could he not know these principles? However, it was said that it was easy to do and difficult to do. If she really did it that easily, then she would not be her. Looking at Gu Yi's hesitant expression, her thin lips hooked slightly overnight and her temples flew sideways, giving her a slightly more charming look. Darling, you look very energetic. Why don't we do something else? At this time, the two of them were lying on the bed. After being torn apart just now, Gu Yi's pajamas had been torn off quite a bit. Her skin was exposed. Outside the window, the bright moonlight shone through the glass and onto the bed, carefully reflecting the beautiful scenery into Iya's eyes. With a thought, her deep eyes became scorching hot. However, Gui did not discover this while immersed in her own thoughts. Instead, she followed Iya's words and asked stupidly, What are you doing? Of course it's to do something that makes us happy. Iya leaned closer to Gui's ear and let out a breath of hot air. She felt Gu Yi tremble endlessly because of this. She felt a little proud in her heart. Without waiting for Gu Yi to react, she pulled her big hand and the loose pajamas on Gu Yi's body were pulled away by Yi. Gu Yi shielded her chest in shock and scolded without thinking, what are you doing? However, Gu Yi immediately regretted what she said. Seeing the burning flames in Yi Ye's eyes, how could she not understand what Yi Yi wanted to do? Her face immediately turned red. Gui looked at Yi speechlessly and said, Right now you're doing your business. What are you talking about? Even though she said that, Gui's eyebrows curled into a smile and she didn't seem to be angry at all. Her clothes were taken off very quickly. Yi was deliberately not letting Gui think about other things. Naturally, she was tormented by this energy. Very quickly, Gui fell into the world of Yi's senses. She didn't have time to think about other things anymore. It was because Li Ruichen and Li Ruhen's words were only an ordinary week or two, but they were extremely long for Gu Yi. On this day, Xiaoma went to school. Sure you went to sleep. Gu Yi stayed by the bed and watched her daughter's eyes go empty. This was a common pattern for Gu Yi in recent days. Everyone around her could tell that she was thinking about the Li clan once they saw her like this. Sister Gu, I have a question for you. Because sure you was sleeping, Li Yin's voice wasn't loud, but because Li Yin's hand kept pulling on Gu Yi, it was enough to pull her back from the mess. Gu Yi turned to look at Li Yin and asked, what's the problem? Recently, you've been absent-minded in everything you've done. Are you still thinking about what big brother and second brother said one day? One day, not only would it be a shock to Gu Yi, it would also be a shock to Li Yin, Li Ruichen, and Li Ruihen. Li Yin was careless and kept calling Gu Yi big sister, but in fact, she knew better than anyone else that Gu Yi was not her big sister. At the same time, she also knew that Gu Yi's reminder to her on that day was very likely to exist. This was an obvious fact and Gu Yi did not deny it, yes. Although Gu Yi usually looked no different from a normal person in reality, after experiencing a father like Zhang Qishan, it was impossible for her to have no shadow left in her heart. Even though she once yearned for her family to love her, when these people really appeared, the first thing she felt was not happiness, but confusion. Li Yin had never experienced that before, so he naturally didn't know much about Gu Yi's mentality, so he didn't want to say it directly. I once asked you if you were my lost sister if you were suddenly found one day, would you ever hate them for losing you? As Li Yin spoke, his eyes were filled with anticipation as he looked at Gu Yi nervously. You said that if my lost eldest sister lives well after being taken away by someone, even though your mind is uncomfortable, as long as you have time, you will still accept us. But if you are taken away and your life is not good, then there may be resentment in your heart. So are you also resenting your mother and brother now? After knowing that Gu Yi was his sister, Li Yin asked Xin Yu a lot about Gu Yi. Of course, she knew that Gu Yi's past life was not only not good, but it could even be described as very bad. When Xin Yu mentioned how Zhang Qishan treated Gu Yi, Li Yin remembered what Gu Yi had said. These past few days, Gu Yi was absent-minded. She was also absent-minded. 
She had always wanted to ask, but she was somewhat afraid to ask. She was afraid that she would not get the answer she wanted. It was just that Li Yin was not someone who could hold his tongue in the end. After enduring for a few days, he could not help it anymore. Gui raised her head and looked into Li Yin's eyes. With a single glance, she could clearly see the anticipation and nervousness in Li Yin's eyes. Sister Gu, tell me honestly, are you hating them? That's why you're unwilling to admit this fact. At this moment, the ward was so quiet that Li Yin didn't even dare to blink at Gu Yi as if he could hear his own breathing. Under Li Yin's nervous gaze, Gu Yi also asked herself in her heart. After a long time, she blurted out, No, I've never thought of it that way. When Li Yin told her about the previous events of the year, Li Yin had no idea that she might be her lost sister, so there was no need to lie in front of her. It could be said that her loss back then was just an accident. Moreover, after so many years, the Li clan had never given up on searching for her. Obviously, they still felt guilty and cared about her in their hearts. How could she blame them for this? Are you sure you don't hate me? Li Yin's tone was somewhat uncertain. Of course. Gui looked at her unconfident appearance and couldn't help but laugh, otherwise, why would I lie to you? Li Yin pouted and looked at Gu Yi. After a long time, he sighed. Since you don't hate me, why are you looking so dazed and sad these past few days? You don't even know how uncomfortable Big Brother is when he looks at you like this. Although Big Brother didn't say anything, Li Yin knew that Big Brother had always blamed him in his heart. Now that he had finally found someone in Gu Yi's attitude, he could imagine how uncomfortable he felt in his heart. Although Li Ruohen didn't say anything, she must be feeling uncomfortable in her heart. Thinking about the way Li Ruohen spoke, Gu Yi didn't know what to say, so she could only sigh in the end. Nian Yin, you should be young. There are some things you won't understand. Hearing the word small, Li Ying Yin's expression changed. Big sister Gu, I'm already an adult. Don't treat me like a child like Big Brother and the others. On the one hand, Li Ying Yin liked to be spoiled by her family, but on the other hand, he hated that they always treated her as a child who didn't understand anything. No matter what, they kept it from her and didn't let her know. That was why last time, there was the matter of her secretly running out alone after she found out about her sister. Gu Yi's face tightened when she heard Li Ying Yin's words, but her heart burst into laughter. Only children like to say that they are not children. Big sister Gu, since you don't hate big brother and mother, but with this expression, it can't be that you're afraid to come back with us, right? Gu Yi was laughing in her heart when she heard Li Ying Yin's sudden words. Li Ying Yin was originally blessed, so he said this. Now that he saw Gui like this, his heart creaked. Well, her crow's mouth was really... Chapter 487 Life and Death Line Sometimes you are too eager for something. When it really appears in front of you, you feel like you don't know what to do. This was the feeling in Guyi's heart. However, no matter what you say, she can't understand this feeling when she tells Li Yin, a girl who grew up smoothly and never had any special worries. So when sure you woke up, he wouldn't tell her about it. No, Li Yin stopped talking, but Li Ruichen started again. I heard what little Yi said to Nin Yin this afternoon. When Li Ruichen said this, Gu Yi was gently shaking Shi Yu in her arms. She didn't know if it was because her body was uncomfortable. Shi Yu was always noisy lately. When she woke up, she had to be jolted and coaxed. Otherwise, she would cry. Normally, Gu Yi would not pamper Shi Yu this much, but now that Shi Yu was sick, how could she pamper her so much? But even though Shi Yu is a child, his hands are always sour after hugging for a long time. In addition to listening to Li Ruichen's words, he is a little absent-minded, so little Shi Wei almost fell out. In the end, Li Ruichen was quick-witted, which prevented Shi Yu from falling. But in this way, Shi Yu falls into Li Ruichen's arms. Li Ruichen lowered his head to look at Shi Yu who was lying in his embrace and almost fell down, but he thought that they were playing with her. His usually cold face also showed a smile and his entire person also seemed a bit gentle. Gui watched from the side, watching Li Ruichen and Shi Yu tease but did not speak. When Li Ruichen raised his head to look at her, she did not react for a while. If you hadn't lied to Nian Nian just now and really didn't hate us for losing you, then you're afraid to go home now, afraid to face those extra people like us. Gui was originally absent-minded when Li Ruichen saw her, but when she heard him say this, she was immediately stunned. She subconsciously wanted to object, but when she saw Li Ruichen's pitch black eyes, she stopped working. Li Ruichen's eyes were different from Iya's pitch black and deep eyes and even had a bit of sharpness. At this moment, these eyes were very gentle, but there was a sense of tolerance in such gentleness. It was as if no matter what Gui said, he would not be angry and blame them. 
Under such a warm and transparent gaze, Gu Yi could not conceal her true thoughts and nodded honestly. Yes, I don't know how to face you. Facing a person like Li Rui Chen, Gu Yi had no way to perfunctory, let alone lie. I seem to be a little happy and a little scared. I want to get close, but I don't know how to get close. That feeling was really complicated. It wasn't that Gu Yi deliberately didn't tell Li Ying Yan, but that she didn't know what to say. Li Rui Chen did not interrupt. He just quietly listened to Gu Yi's words. Gu Yi unconsciously relaxed her guard and slowly told her what she felt in her heart. The whole afternoon, the two of them sat in the ward and talked about some small things. It was only when the sun was about to set that it finally ended. Little E, I know that our sudden appearance will scare you, but you don't have to worry too much. As long as you don't hate me, you don't have to worry about how to get close to us, as long as you don't exclude us from getting close to us. Li Ruechen holds Shuryu in one hand and raises his hand to rub Gu Yi's hair. Li Ruechen often does this to Li Yin. Gu Yi naturally saw the three siblings staying here for so long. Therefore, when he saw Li Ruechen's hand leaning towards him, he instinctively wanted to dodge. Li Ruechen looks at her reflexes, he wasn't angry either. The smile on his lips didn't change at all. He was still so tolerant and spoiled. It was as if no matter what she said or did, he wouldn't be angry, much less think that there was something wrong. Therefore, Gu Yi's actions could be stopped, allowing Li Ruechen's hand to rub her head. Li Ruechen's movements are naturally not very heavy, light and gentle. It is very easy for the person being rubbed to feel the pity and indulgence of the person who did this action towards her. Sure enough, Li Ruechen saw that Gu Yi stopped dodging and the smile at the corner of his lips deepened a lot. His eyes were so gentle that they almost oozed out of the water. You see, as long as you don't resist, it won't be that difficult for you to accept an extra family like us. People come from different places. As long as you don't care about the gains and losses and treat a person well, that person will be touched by you one day. Because of Li Ruichen's words, Gu Yi's heart relaxed a lot. Although she had to adapt to the large number of families that had appeared, it was not bad to adapt to the three siblings. However, in the past 10 days, their relationship was much better than before. Although they weren't like Li Yingyan and Li Ruichen who grew up together, they were still considered good friends. In the blink of an eye, two weeks had passed, and the results of the blood and bone marrow test had also come out. Early in the morning, everyone gathered at the entrance of the laboratory, waiting for the results. Hurry up, hurry up. How are the results of our blood tests? Li Yingyan was more anxious than any of the others. Seeing the doctor come out of the laboratory, he hurriedly pulled the doctor's sleeve and asked, According to the test results, we must be siblings. Although in Li Yingyan's heart, as long as it was Li Ruichen and Li Ruihan's investigation results, there shouldn't be any mistakes, but without seeing the final examination results, his heart was still hanging in the air. However, Li Yingyan was anxious. The rest of them were equally anxious. People blamed her for being so anxious that they were waiting for the doctor to give an answer. Yes, the blood test results show that the similarity rate is 99.8%. They are siblings. As the doctor spoke, a smile appeared on his face. Also, there is good news. Among them, Mr. Li Ruihan's bone marrow type matches Ms. Shi Yu's. As long as the examination data are qualified, the operation can start in three days. As soon as the doctor finished speaking, Gu Yi felt as if all her strength had been drained. Her body instantly went soft, and her eyes were immediately wet with tears. Little E. Little E. Different voices came from different directions, but the same thing was that their voices were filled with deep concern. Yi Yi hugged Gu Yi and frowned invisibly, because the other half of Gu Yi's body was pulled by Li Ruichen. This was the first time someone had supported Gu Yi at the same time. Yi Yi was not used to it. Raising his head to look at Li Ruichen, Li Ruichen's line of sight also happened to look over. The gazes of the two met in the air and neither of them said anything. Li Yin didn't think too much. He only knew that what he had been thinking for so long had finally come true. He didn't care that Yi Yi and Li Ruichen were still pulling Gu Yi. He directly carried Gu Yi over and cried loudly. Sister Gu, you're finally my sister. Gu Yi's body was being pulled by three people. One of them was crying so hard that his heart was broken. It was really funny to look at. Xin Yu stood at the side and watched as Yi Yi's brows kept beating because Gu Yi was hugged by Li Yin, but he had no choice but to endure. His face was serious and his heart was about to bloom with laughter. Moreover, there was also a Li Ruihan beside him. Although he did not move, his eyes were always glued to Gu Yi's body. If Gu Yi hadn't been carved up, he would have interfered. It seemed that the good time when Yi Yi dominated Gu Yi was coming to an end. 
Gui quickly calmed down and cried for half an hour before stopping. When she came back to her senses and saw everyone looking at her, her face immediately turned red. Sorry, I just lost my composure. No matter what happened, she was always a grown-up. She was still crying in front of so many people, so she was always a little embarrassed. Iyi was a little stuffy, hugging Gui tightly and not letting go. It's fine, it's fine. I used to hug my big brother and cry. Little girl Li Yin said with a lot of pride. Gui was slightly embarrassed, but there weren't as many people watching her right now. That's right, this is considered good. As soon as Li Yin finished speaking, Li Ruihin said coldly, it's only been half an hour. Nian Yin cried for a day at that time. Those with good stamina can't keep up with us who have been training for a long time. She cried all day. What kind of scene was that? Although tears were still hanging on Gu Yi's face, after such a cry, the sullen anger that had been suppressed in her heart started to cry. Hearing Li Ruihen's words at this time, she was somewhat stunned. All of a sudden, everyone turned their heads and looked at the lively and beautiful Li Yin. They really didn't know what this person would look like after crying for a day. Being watched by so many gazes, even if Li Yin's skin was thick, he couldn't stand it. He immediately collapsed. Second brother, you liar, you said you wouldn't tell anyone else about this. Li Ruihin grabs Li Yin, who rushes over and says innocently, but they are not others. Li Yin paused and turned to look. He really didn't know what to say. Li Ruichen is the eldest brother and Gu Yi is the second elder sister. Although Yi Yi is not related to them by blood, since he is married to Gu Yi and he is the second brother-in-law, he cannot be considered an outsider, and the remaining Xin Yu. Xin Yu watched the show very lively. He didn't want all his eyes to fall on him. He raised his head and looked at everyone. When he saw the flickering light in Li Ruihen's eyes, his heart suddenly fell to the bottom of the valley. If you're talking about outsiders, this Mr. Shin is the outsider. Chapter 488 up to this flowing year. Originally, if it wasn't for Gu Yi and Yi Yi being considered outsiders, then Shin Yu, who was his friend, would naturally be considered an outsider. Of course, he was not an outsider unless he had other identities. However, Li Yin, who was originally aggressive, turned his head and immediately dodged when he met Shen Yu. He was like a hamster obedient. This, this. Li Ruihen looked at him with a sidelong brow and a cold expression. What a pity. Shen Yu was looked at by Li Ruihen, and his expression did not change at all, but his gaze fell on Li Yin. The people present were all smart people, so how could they not look down on each other when they lived together these past few days? This Li Yin was clearly with Xin Yu, but for some unknown reason, he had never spoken openly or officially. Xin Yu thought about it, but Li Yin had always disagreed. Although he didn't know the reason, Xin Yu respected Li Yin. However, this was a good opportunity to confess. As smart as Xin Yu, he didn't want to let go of it. Nian Yin. Nian Yin. Almost at the same time, Li Ruihen and Xin Yu called out Li Yin's name. When they heard each other's voice, they looked up at each other, and their expressions didn't look too good. Xin Yu was much better off because he was worried about Li Yin, but Li Ruihin did not have so many worries. His eyes were cold, as if he wanted to eat people. When Li Yin heard the voice, he raised his head and looked left and right. Of course, he could see the expressions of the two of them. Sensing Li Yin's gaze, Xin Yu's expression became even more grieved. His beautiful peach blossom eyes were covered with a layer of mist making him look even more alluring and likable. Seeing Li Yin's eyes, Xin Yu, who had been tempted by beauty, instantly lost her fear of Li Ruihen and said without hesitation, Second brother, Xin Yu is my boyfriend now, so he can't be considered an outsider. As soon as these words were spoken, the ward became quiet and Xin Yu was happy. The others had calm expressions on their faces, but in reality, only they knew what they were thinking in their hearts. Boyfriend, Li Ruihen says with a playful tone, Nin Yin, are you sure your eyes are clean and you can see clearly that your boyfriend is not randomly chosen from cabbages on the street? Chinese cabbage. He. If it wasn't for Li Yin's older brother, Shen Yu, who had always had good face and worried about his image, would have rushed forward to fight him. Thinking of him, Shen Yu was at least the eldest young master. Although his temper was gentle, it wasn't that he didn't have a temper. He had always been the one who buried others, so how could it be someone else's turn to bury him? Li Yin also knew that Li Ruihen did not like Xin Yu very much because the first time they met in the villa was not easy to deal with. It was not strange to hear him say this, but he felt a little pain in his head. Turning to look at Xin Yu, there was nothing on Xin Yu's face. He looked calm and magnanimous, but the look of grievance in his eyes became even more intense. 
Li Yin turned around and looked at Li Ruihin, second brother. Xin Yu and I really like each other so we can be together. Even if you had any grudges with him before, can you just wipe it off for my sake? Poochie! Before Li Yin could finish his words, someone in the room let out a burst of laughter. At this moment, a sudden laughter came from the quiet ward. It really seemed a little abrupt and attractive. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. As Gui said this, she covered her mouth and waved her hand continuously. However, her eyes were full of smiles as she said this. Obviously, she was really happy in her heart, but she didn't know what she was happy about. Originally, the atmosphere was supposed to be tense, but because of Gu Yi's smile, Li Yin and Li Ruihen did not continue to discuss this issue. When her emotions stabilized, they dispersed. In the corridor, Gu Yi stands beside Li Ruihen and looks into the distance like him. Thank you. Li Ruihen looks back at Gu Yi, and the awe in her eyes dissipates a lot. She looks at him for a long time without saying a word. Being watched by Li Ruihen's gaze, Gu Yi did not turn around and looked at him. I'm talking about sure you. Bone marrow matching wasn't that easy. If it wasn't for their kinship, perhaps not a single one of the 100,000 people would be able to come out. Even if they did, how many people would be willing to help? Therefore, Gu Yi was very grateful for this. Li Ruihen looks into Gu Yi's eyes and a smile flashes in her eyes. Her gaze is just like Li Ruichen's very warm. No need. This is what I have to do. Even if you are not my sister, I will still do it. Moreover, she was his sister. Li Ruihen, like Li Yin, had only heard of this sister from her family and had never seen her before. But perhaps he had heard too much, and even if he had not seen it before, he still had a feeling in his heart. There's no need to think too much. As long as you can live a good life, it's fine. Although Li Ruihen's words were different from Li Ruichen's, they were strangely similar in some respects. As long as she's fine. It was very simple, very direct, but it was also the simplest words. Because Li Ruihen's bone marrow matched Shi Yu's bone marrow, there was naturally no need to search for new bone marrow. After half a month, when Shi Yu's body recovered, the doctor performed a bone marrow transplant on Shi Yu. The operation was very successful. After a period of rest, Shi Yu's body could recover completely. Gu Yi really didn't know what kind of language to thank Li Ruihen for this, but Li Ruihen just smiled and gave her a hug. After Shi Yu recovered, Gu Yi was mentally prepared and brought Yi Yi, Xiao Ma, Shi Yu, and Li Ying Yin back to the Li family. After spending so much time, Father Li and Mother Li were naturally excited to find their lost daughter again. If it weren't for Li Ruichen saying that Shi Yu was sick, Gu Yi would have been nervous about her daughter at this time. She didn't have the time to think so much. At the same time, she herself needed some time to ease up, so the two old men would probably have directly killed her. Fortunately, waiting wasn't in vain. Right now, Gu Yi was standing at the entrance of the Li clan with Yi Yi, Xiao Ma, and Shi Yu. Looking outside, there were two excited people standing in the backlight. Even from a distance, they could feel the excitement in their emotions and the tears in their eyes. The man was tall and big. Even though his temples were slightly dyed with white frost, he could still see the coldness of his face. He was usually a serious person, but at this time, he tried his best to smile kindly. As for the woman, her eyes were red and swollen, and her face was filled with gentleness and excitement. Even if she had never interacted with her before, she could guess her usual temperament. These two people, who had the same feeling and expression as her when she was young, were really her parents. Even though they had already appeared in front of her, Gu Yi still had an unreal feeling. Such an unreal feeling did not come true until Li Ying Yen and Li Ruihin brought them in and she was hugged tightly by that woman. After so many years of separation and reunion, their relatives were naturally filled with excitement and tears. When their emotions stabilized, motherly and fatherly naturally had to care about how Gu Yi had been doing these past few years. Because she knew that Mama Li's health wasn't good, Gu Yi naturally wouldn't scare them by telling them about those cruel past. She could only choose some good ones to comfort them. After an afternoon of interrogation, this matter was finally erased. After understanding Gu Yi's own affairs, Mother Li and Father Li's attention was attracted to Xiao Ma and Shi Yu. They held each other lovingly in their hands, not even willing to let Li Ying Yin interfere. Such a biased appearance made Li Ying Yin a little jealous and naturally attracted another round of amusement. All the liveliness, all the throbbing returned to calm after the day had passed. Gu Yi and Yi Yi were lying in the room prepared by Mother Li and Father Li. The two of them hugged each other tightly. In the darkness, Gui looked at Iyi's handsome face with a smile. Iyi, I finally have my parents. I have my own home. 
When I was young, all my fantasies were realized at this moment. That kind of excitement and happiness could not be described in just a few words. I'm so happy. Iyu looked at Guyi's smiling face and smiled. Yes, it's good that you're happy. No matter what you do, it's good as long as you're happy. Thank you. Guyi was very grateful to the heavens. In the past, there were many unpleasant things in her life, but the heavens still did not treat her unkindly. Her future had everything she wanted. It was night, Gu Yi and Yi Yi sat against each other in front of the French window, looking at the bright moon in the sky. At this time of the year, harmony was beautiful.